five minutes, four minutes. We'll ask them. We'll we'll see what to do, and we'll give you five minutes at the end. At twelve fifty-five. Five to seven. I'll not repeat anything, but I would like to say something as a concluding prayer, my lord, before you all. Right. All right. Yes, Miss Bati. My lord, sir, we had circulated a note, my lord, last week, and three compilations. And we have, my lord, circulated one additional compilation yesterday, my lords, yesterday evening. Additionally, my lords, I will also be referring to note two of the learned SG, my lords, because the aspect with regard to child. Yes. And my lords, at the outset, I must also say, my lords, uh, that though the application is filed on behalf of NCTCR, but we had to take lots of inputs from the ministry. Of women and child development and also CARA. So, Lordship may take it that these submissions are malads comprehensively from these three bodies, malads. Which submissions you will be referring? Malads, we we filed our submit. I made yes, a brief. We have your list of uh, Lordships have submissions, submissions. malads. It is in three parts, malads. Part A, Part B, and Part C. I can actually confine only to Part B because other aspects are which are covered, but that's. Just for the sake of completion, my lords, it's a short note. And there are three compilations, my lords, A, B, C, and one filed yesterday, D. So we have now a master index by Ms. Bhatti. Please, my lords. Then um, we have part A compilation, part B compilation, part C, and part D compilation. Please, then you are written submission. Please, my lords. That's the. Lordships, please. My lords, part A of my note is, my lords, where. Just, I'll just give a brief wherever your lordships want me to right. stop and elaborate. I will. Yes. I'll just give an outline, my lords. So the first part A really deals with two submissions, my lords. First, I have tried to submit that there's a basic structure of the marriage, and that is a union of man and woman. The second submission I have, my lords, is gender fluidity. I'm not elaborating, my lords. I'm just just stating my propositions and. The second submission I have is that gender fluidity is impermissible where cisgender is core and ignoring rationale of valid classification amounts to perpetrating in inequality. Then I've given examples of areas which have been reserved specifically for women because if these spaces are diluted in any manner, then what will be lost is really the cause of women's uh, equality, women's well-being, women's empowerment. That is my second point, my lords, and I've given examples like women's uh, recruitments, spaces which are specifically for women, women's washrooms, women's correctional homes, women's women inmates, uh, welfare homes, ladies' barroom in the Supreme Court. When your lordships recognized in NALSA, transgenders as a third gender, your lordships did not, using the expression that Mr. Datar did, my lords, did not retrofit in the two existing genders. Your lordships identified them as a third gender. So, my lords, it's very critical that gender fluidity cannot be permitted in areas where cisgender is core. That brings me, my lords, now to part B. That is specifically with regard to children. And, my lords, the preposition that I have is welfare of child is paramount and sacrosanct and cannot be opened, exposed even for an iota of potential compromise or uncertainty. Well, it's for the first preposition, that is the child has a right to be born and raised by a biological, by biological parents. Well, it's for this, I will rely on note two of the Learned Solicitor General for India, my lords. Your lordships will kindly have page 39 to 49 of that note. There are some research papers also, which is there in their compilation, but Learned SG's note quotes the paragraphs that are relevant. If your lordships will kindly take that with me, my lords, page 39 of note two of Learned SG. Only for the purpose of these two prepositions, that the legitimate state interest of ideal mode of child rearing. My lords, all children are naturally born only to heterosexual couples. And now, my lords, when I take your lordships through the architecture of my lords' laws which are relating to children, there are no competing rights in this space, my lords. The only sacrosanct, paramount right is that of the child. To the extent that sometimes a child may need to be protected from himself, 
the entire malas architecture of these laws are from the concept of welfare of child being paramount so my lords my respectful submission is if your lords will my lords have page 39 of learned sd's note my lords which note uh, note 2 my lords note 2 note 2 of the learned sg okay. this chapter my lords the violation to note 2 note 2 PDF page 39. My lords, it's running 39. PDF should be PDF at all, I think. 44, yes. it could be, my lords. 42. I'm grateful. 42, my lords. 42. The legitimate 42. state interest of ideal mode of child rearing. Am I, yes. my lords? Page 42 starts with note 2, fundamental rights, para 59. My lords, this is para 63. 60. Very well. Bottom. Got it. Yes. My lords will see, my lords, this is for the preposition that legitimate state interest of ideal mode of child rearing. Now, Lotus will, my lords, the fundamental point is that a child can only be naturally born through a heterosexual couple. And therefore, the special significance of recognition of heterosexual marriages cannot be understated from the point of view of child Birth of child and bringing up of the child, both. Floods. There are some very interesting papers that have been put together, my lords, in the research of this note. And my lords, these papers show that fathers and mothers both play complementary roles in upbringing of the child. And state is justified in treating homosexual and heterosexual unions differently for that purpose. The first paper, my lads, that is quoted in para 66 is straight is better while law and society may legitimately prefer homosexual heterosexuality is a paper, my lads, from a professor of law, my lads, of Case Western University, Ohio. Your lodges will find that at uh, page 353, the entire paper is there in compilation volume 8 of Learned SG, my lads. It's mentioned here. The relevant paras are qu quoted here. And if I can draw your lordships, to the last para that is quoted at the next page, my lads. Which page? Marriage, my lads, I am at page 41, the noted page 41. Yes, but which compilation? Same thing. Note. Same yes. thing. Yes. Learned note. SG's note, my lads. I was just giving that the complete paper is there, but the relevant portions are here. So marriage is not a factory for childbearing. Marriage exists to encourage men and women to create the next generation in the light, in the right context and simultaneously to discourage the creation of children in other contexts out of wedlock in fatherless homes. Well, that's the next uh, paper that's in Para 68 is marriage from a child's perspective. How does family structure affect children and what we can do about it? Please see the highlighted portion. It is not simply the presence of two parents, as some have assumed, but the presence of two biological parents that seem to support child development. Children in single parent families, children born to unmarried mothers, children in step families or cohabiting relationships face higher risk of poor outcomes than do children in intact families headed by two biological parents. Parental divorce is also linked to a range of poorer academic and behavioral outcomes. The next paper, Malaz, this is Malaz, a Pennsylvania University law professor. The next chapter is, the next paper is tradition, pluralism and same sex marriages. This has four authors, my lads. The paper your lordships will find in volume eight of the Learned SG's compilation. Please see, my lads, the highlighted portions in the second para. To date, the research on child well being and family form bears out that children thrive on structure, order, routine, stability, continuity, certainty, and clarity. The evidence shows that conventional beats unconventional every time. This means that complexities and ambiguities of non-traditional families come at a price. But Ms. Bhatti, our law permits a single person to adopt a child. Malads, permit me to come to that now. Yes. Your lordships will see this, Malads. The learned SG did not place it. Lordship may right. note that this is, Malads, from page 39 to 49 on both the prepositions. The first is, Malads, that the legitimate straight interest and that I showed to your lordships. And that there are some papers, Malads, on 
There is lack of data to establish equivalence with biological heterogeneous upbringing of children. Lordship may see it. I'm just, I just brought it to your Lordship's notice because it was uh, uh, the learned ST left it to me, my lads. Right. Now, please come back to my note, my lads. Your Lordships will see. Which is your note now? My lads, uh, your Lordships had my note, welfare of child. I was. One second, yes. I'm sorry, this. To go back. Written submissions on behalf of. Uh, yeah, yeah. So I've said only NCPCR, but it's also the Ministry and CARA. Written. My lords will have para 8, my lords, at internal page 5, at page 5 of my submissions. This I have placed. The second preposition is. Which page? Sorry. Party, I'm sorry, sorry, my lords. Yes, my lords. Yeah, this is eight. para 5 at page 4. No, but which note is. This is the uh, uh, note. You're note. talking of note. There's only one note. Written yes, my lords. Yes, my lords. Gender fluidity, right? Yes, my lords. That, that uh, I just mentioned, and then I came to part B, which is at page five. I hope, my lords, my lords, Justice Paul have my lords the. Yes, I have it. That welfare of children is paramount in sacrifice. Very grateful. Very grateful, my lords. Click on Ashura Bhattish, and you'll get. Eight. I, my lords, I only touched the prepositions in part A because it has been extensively dealt with and I am at my lords para 10 now, my lords. Para 10. State also. as parents patriae of children, my lords. And for, this is critical, my lords. I will show to your lordships the Juvenile Justice Act because the entire architecture, when it comes to well, the legislations with regard to welfare of child, my lords, it's the, it's the child alone who has rights. And my lords, it's in sync with the UN Child Right Convention. It is in sync with the constitutional philosophy and ethos. And please see how the Juvenile Justice Act deals with. May I, Lord, may I request your lordships to take uh, my compilation A? I put the acts there so I can show. Why don't we go through your written so, note? That so, might be much better so that you know we get then the your lordship structure will put in our mind. Wherever there. necessary, we'll go there. So, my lords, the I'm not touching this aspect of parents' patria anymore than mentioning it that. It's the settled very well settled, so they you don't have to read out the case law. From your lordship's judgment, then your lordships will see para 11, my lords. The architecture of child legislations is so pervasive and imper uh, imp is uh, and so imp significant that it even extends to covering beneficially the mother of the child, my lords. Human child, my lords. I, I. I don't have to state it, but human child really is one of the most helpless childs of all my lords living beings in the nature. And it needs all pervasive, in intense and indulgent care in the early years. And therefore, my lords, mother has been strongly protected, not just in the Constitution, but also in the Juvenile Justice Act, the Maternity Benefit Act. Yes. My lords. Article 42, I have, my lords, adverted to in para 11. And my lords, para 12, I have stated that that a gender may be fluid, but the idea of mother cannot be. And therefore, my lords, it is very pertinent and important that this is given a very careful consideration. The whole perspective is, my lords, that are what I'm presenting for your lordship's kind consideration is from the point of view to show to your lordship that this architecture how it is going to be, my lads, impacted by a declaration and reading in into Special Marriage Act. against a situation which is forget about the gender part where there's sometimes only a father we have gone beyond motherhood we have we have gone into parenthood today because there are as uh, justice Kohli is mentioning please man. there are single parents parents please man. Now, male or a female there's a death a childbirth please man. the mother unfortunately dies of disease or accident please the compulsion. there is no question of the the caregiver being the father regardless please, of likewise there are adopted adopted children yes, of only you know by of males 
Please, by, by men, by men, by fathers. So it's gone beyond the concept of, in that sense, I bow down. In that sense, when the constitution envisioned it, and some of this parents' patria, interestingly, if you see the quotation in, of, of Lord Justice Lindley, he talked about husbands, guardians, and fathers. Please, minister. So where, that was a situation where women didn't have agency, women were even seen as wards. Please, my lord. Right? So there, therefore, the question of uh, guardianship was that with men. Please, my lord. So the, it, it's an evolving, you know. I bow down, my lord. I bow down to what is falling but from what the What is central to this, yes, is un, un, unchanging, which is the welfare of the of child. The child. Please, my lord. So, my lords, my respectful submission would be, my lords, that your lordships may see it from the perspective that this method of naturally born heterosexual couples bringing up their children is the ideal mode. And the law in the entire regulation has provided for, my lords, children who do not have that. From that perspective, please see now, my lords, the aspect of adoption. I, I have given one example in para 13 of sponsorship which is available to only widowed, divorced, or abandoned mothers to seek sponsorship for their children. That's a, that's a, pro, a protection under Section 45, specifically available only to this category of women, Malats. Then please see, Malats, please see Para 14. My respectful submission is adoption is not an alternate to biological birth, Malats. My respectful submission is that adoption is a mechanism to Literally, find... Best a law does recognize that you can adopt for a variety of reasons. Yes. You may adopt even though you are capable of biological birth. Please, please. You can adopt if you don't want biological birth. Please, my lord. Uh, there's no compulsion to have biological children. Therefore, our law does recognize... Please, my lord. ...the fact that there may be situations within this ideal of, you know, a cohabiting family with, you know, father and mother of, uh, you know, of, of a heterosexual uh, gender uh, family uh, having their own biologically born children. But that's not Please. our law is postulated also, right? What happens if, suppose, during the, between the pendency, during the tenure of a heterosexual marriage, one of the spouses dies, then the other spouse really assumes the character of a father and the mother, depending on, you know, uh, isn't it? So, that is something which our law recognizes. My Lord, I, I bow down. The law recognizes again from the perspective of the child. Your lordships have held that there is no fundamental right of adoption. No, I think uh, we may we may differ on that because even if you go back to tradition, yes, my Lord. The right of a grandfather to take in adoption, please, my Lord. The son of the uh, on the son of the daughter, what is classically known as one of the approved forms of approved uh, you know forms of yes having a child yes my Pitri ka putra. please my so that that is a known notion so it is not a not that this is no sanction it is go, it is hallowed it's hallowed in tradition Hello, i bow down my lord therefore to say this is an exception may not be appropriate my lord, why do why why did in, even in some schools uh, even grown women widows are uh, enabled to adopt why there's a, there, there's a, another purpose there, Malad. and even uh, there are there are situations where where adoptions take place, and thereafter there is biological birth. Please that too you. happens. So Malad. there are any number of situations where adoptions is is the norm. But yes, you're right. That, but then we, all this is serving to emphasize and heavily underline that there is a normal, and these are exceptions. My Lord, my respectful submission is not of exception. My endeavor is to present to your lordships that all of this is crafted together from the perspective of child being at the core of it. It is not right that in your but that you can that you need not labor at all. That may not be paramount. that may not be. But the welfare of the child is paramount, obviously. Yeah, definitely. So, my lord, adoption is. I, I want to show to your lordship. The means of realizing that welfare are numerous. The pathways are I numerous. I bow down. I bow down. In fact. Adoption. Some of them are a matter of choice, some are a matter of uh, compulsion. I bow down, my lords, and the CARA guidelines actually... But tell us one thing, is it your case that a right which is otherwise available to an individual to adopt a child is taken away because that individual is in any relationship otherwise than a heterosexual marriage? That is right, my lords. 
And that is not just true for adoption. That is true for assisted reproduction, which is now reg regulated by the assisted reproduction. If two people in a living, if two people are in a live-in relationship, yes, Malans. Does that mean that therefore, because of the fact that the two people are in a live-in relationship, yes. maybe a heterosexual couple, that they will not have a right to adopt? Not in the under the existing law, Malans. Not just adopt. But Malans, there is the right of one of them to adopt taken away because she or he is in a live-in relationship? Malans, one of them can adopt. But the only couple relationship that adoption is in surrogate reproduction, all three of them only recognize one kind of couple, that is a heterosexual married couple. Therefore, no, no. But therefore, if two people, if yes. a heterosexual couple is in a living relationship, one of them can certainly adopt. Or is it Kara's case that we will deny you the right to adopt because you are in a heterosexual live-in relationship? No, my lord. Sir. Mm -hmm. I, permit me to show it to your lordship, the Kara. If I may paraphrase your argument, it is yes, like this: your, the public policy consideration which which you are actually mooting or advocating, or rather saying, stating, is that yes, we allow adoptions by single, uh, uh, let's say, males, single females. In their capacity as single males or single females, Please, but, but not they, the moment they enter into a, either a uh, you know, same-sex so. relationship or another kind of live-in relationship, that relationship is not per se recognized. I bow down, my lips. So the only recognition of a relationship of father and mother is where there is a heterosexual, heterosexual marriage. Lordships, please. And that is true not just for adoption, but also ART. My, my question is different. If people are in a living relationship, Please, my lords. then is the right of an individual in a living relationship no. to adopt taken away by virtue of the fact that they are in a living relationship? My lords, they will not be, a, so it, only one parent can adopt as a Fair single mother or a single That you've got. Lordship. But your circular says something to the contrary. No. Because no. your circular says that the moment you are in a living relationship, albeit in a same-sex relationship, then you cannot, you cannot adopt even as a single individual. My lords, I will quickly take your lordships through the architecture of the JJ Act. Also, I yes, sure. find one more fact, Ms. Vati. Besides the fact that Honorable the CJ has pointed out, Please, my lord. there is that condition. And what if, and that what if will be important, that somebody uh, per, per se says that he or she is not in a living relationship, you probably have a format or something that a person has to sign or say this for you to satisfy yourself. And subsequently does, then what happens? Will the child be taken back? My lords, there is provision for disruption and dissolution in adoption also. There, my lords, it is carefully crafted because child who is adopted will become a, a, a child of that person for all purposes, for inheritance, right. for all other rights. So, my lords, it cannot allow this. There can be no uncertainty in my lords in these matters when it concerns. Person, if he or she elect to adopt will for the rest of their lives have to undertake yes. that they will never be in a no, relationship. No, no, there is no undertaking like that. Unless it's a case no, no. of no, 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 actually marrying. No, my lord, there, there is no undertaking what like is it that. You are, uh, my lord, what I will, I will tell your lordships how they are constructed is that a heterosexual married couple has to also have two years of uh, stable relationship of marriage before they can adopt. It's not like they can, they, they, and they have to have consent from each other. And if it's, it's a single parent? If it's a single parent, then there are other considerations. What is their age? What is the gender of the child? What is their gender? I want to quickly show to your lordships the architecture under the JJ Act, the CARA. Show us that. Lordships, yes. my lords, that Mr. compilation Bhatti. A, I have put all the three acts. Sorry. My lords. Mr. Mr. Bhatti, what I can get what sister is saying is, suppose there is a single adoption. There is an adoption by a single person. After a couple of years, child is being brought up by that parent and he decides uh, you can't guarantee the future what will happen. So he decides to have a, say, to begin with a living relationship. That's not a disqualification. Not at all. It will be there. So how do you explain so, this? My lords, I will quickly take five, ten minutes and take your lordships through the architecture, starting with the Ms. JJ Act. We can recognize two points which you have made. One, if a couple wants to adopt a child, then our adoption regulatory regime only recognizes the right to ad adopt when you are in a heterosexual marital relationship. Please, ma'am. All right? That's your first point. Please, we understand why and what the public policy underlying that is. Please, that 
if you have to be a couple, if you have to be a ma mother and father, you must be necessarily in a heterosexual marriage before you can both adopt a child as a couple. Please. That's your first uh, proposition. Lordship. What we are asking you really is on something slightly different, which is nonetheless our law recognizes the right of a single individual to adopt. Yes, Maharaj. And the question therefore is, and we take it that's your position also, that the right of a single individual to adopt is not affected by the relationship which that single individual may otherwise have, whether it's in the nature of a live-in relationship, which is heterosexual, or a live-in or a relationship of a same sex. So long as you are adopting, uh, so long as you are adopting as a single individual. Lordships, I bow down, my lords. That is my stated position, and my lords, your lordships will appreciate that because the law. So we therefore take it that even a same-sex couple. Yes, my lord. And in, or let me rephrase it, an individual in a same-sex relationship. Please, is not precluded from adopting a child. We Please, take that as Kara's uh, statement of position. Yes, that is the mandate of Juvenile Justice Act. Please. That is the mandate if of... I, if I may just yes. make one more statement, Lord you Chief. will agree with. A single parent Please, who adopts remains a single parent. There is no difficulty. The moment she enters into a matrimonial relationship Please, my with... It's, and it's a heterosexual Lord relationship. Chief. Please, my lords. Then the husband becomes the father. Lordship. Correct? The adoptive father. Like she is the adoptive mother. So then the child, as a consequence, becomes the heir in the event of death to the properties of either. Yes. And rather both. Yes. On the other hand, if the single parent enters into a sexual relation, uh, same sex relationship, then the adoptive child continues to be the adoptive child of that adoptive father. Or the mother. Please and no me. more. Full stop. Yes. This is your proposition. Lordships. What Lord, you say is. So therefore. Sorry. Sorry. Just to Come. take one thought further. What you are driving at here is the stability. Because even in the event of disruption of the family. Like in the case of marriage. There is a divorce. The relationship of an adoptive child continues. Lordships. Whereas there is no. Since there is no marriage. And there is no marriage recognition. That stability would be undermined if you recognize. I bow down, my lords. I bow down to your lordships. My lords, what? Justice Narsimha had a point. Same, same. I was my lords, in fact, Kara has a fast-track method for step-parent adoption also. It may happen that somebody has a natural-born child and she becomes a, a, a divorcee or a widow and she remarries. So her child can be adopted. Yes, yes, there is a, and right, there's a mechanism right. that is... Yes. My lads, it's, it's actually, it's very carefully crafted. My lads, we are a culture of ma, my lads, perhaps Yashoda Mata perhaps and also Devki Mata. My lads. So perhaps. both, my lads, one who gave birth and one who reared the child. We will, we will see those regulations. Perhaps there might not be anything formulated to say it's prohibited. But while hetero marriage might be recognized, same sex, the rules might not have provided any recognition. We will have a look at those rules. Actually, my lords, that is why live-in is also not recognized. Because live-in also is what Mr. Sibyl was mentioning yesterday, the within, the concentric circles. The without is not recognized for live-in. Live-in are, my lords, now recognized under the Domestic Violence Act. A well, living couple cannot adopt a child as a yes. couple. Yes, because they can walk out That's of fair relationship enough. anytime. Fair enough. Fair enough. Do we understand what the, what the public policy Please. precept underlying it is? Please, my lords. But... The existence of a live-in relationship does not prohibit one of the parties from seeking to adopt a child yes, as an individual. Yes, ma'am. See, so you're looking at it from the perspective of the child, which is Such that is. the child is most most benefited in every formation. At least there is one person responsible for that. I bow down. That yes. stability is what you are actually driving at. And the, core, at the, and core the fact that one individual has adopted. That right to adopt or the continuance of that adoption is not affected by any subsequent change in the marital status of that individual who was adopted. Please, my lads. Please, my lads. My lads, in fact, the ART and Surrogacy Act, the validity of some provisions are being considered by Court 5. There are a clutch of petitions that have challenged some provisions. And my lads, there was a point that was sent to the National Board for reconsideration. There's a very, my lads, well-equipped National Board under ART and Surrogacy. Because they are also, my lords, in, in, in a manner only recognizing this couple of heterosexual married couple as a relationship. And my lords, single women are allowed under the ART. 
and only widow and divorced women are allowed then, under surrogacy. Ms. Bharti, can we then summarize your submission in the following terms? That just as there is no recognition according to you today in the state of our law of a same-sex marital relationship, which is legislatively recognized, parallelly, there is no recognition in our law today of the right of a same-sex couple to adopt a child as a couple. Lordships. Yes, my lords. I bow down, my lords. And that is based on the foundation that a child must have a stable family existence, and which you postulate would exist in the case of a heterosexual marriage. My lords, would your lordships just make a note of the sections that I am, my lords, yes, giving yes. to your lordships? The Juvenile Justice Act, my lords, I wanted to show to your lordships. It is at page 82 of my compilation A. I wanted to show chapter 8 to your lordships. And before that, I wanted to show some definitions and some general principles which are in section 2 and section 3. My lords, those general principles are very, very critical, my lords, from my perspective. Because yes, that is yes, really an. Sorry, sister, you said that there was a provision you want us to see? My lords, I want to draw your lordship's attention to some definitions in section 2 and general principles in section 3, my lords. Which are the definition sections? My lords, the definition sections, there are actually there are three kinds of children who are available, my lords, free for adoption. Aband uh, my lords, abandoned child, orphan child, or surrendered child. My lords, this is uh, 82, volume, compilation 1, I think. Compilation A, my lords, we are calling it, and lordships will find it. Printed 87, actually. Yes, my lords. Printed Page 87. 82, it starts, my lords. Printed 87. Compilation, which compilation is this? Compilation A, my lords. Yeah, no. Yeah, no. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Also, 87, yeah. Printed 87. Uh, yeah, 87. Index and 87, it starts, my lords. 87, yes. So these three definitions, your lordships will note, my lords, abandoned child to one. And my lords, please see a definition of adoption itself, process through which adopted child is permanently separated from biological parents and becomes lawful child of adoptive parents with all rights, privileges, and responsibilities that are attached to a biological child. Best interest of the child means the basis for any decision taken regarding child to ensure fulfillment of his basic rights, needs, identity, social well-being, physical, emotional, intellectual development. Child means any, anyone below 18. Please see 15, child friendly, 16, child legally free for adoption. Please now come down, my lords, to orphan at 42. Section 2, subsection 42, orphan. Then, my lords, 49, prospective adoptive parents, same as 57. Now permit me to, my lords, take your lordship. A surrendered lordship will note is 60. Section 2, subsection 60 is surrendered child. And sponsorship, an example of which I gave, my lords, is defined at 58. My lords, the, the general principles, my lords, that are in section 3, there are total 16 principles, my lords. They, my lords, they, are, they, they have been culled out from the United Nations Child Right Convention. And my lords, I want to highlight to your lordships the aspect of number one, presumption of innocence. My lords, the principle of best interest to develop full potential, principle of family responsibility, positive measures, my lords, and I want to read this one, my lords. All resources are mobilized, including those of family and community for promoting well-being, facilitating development of identity, providing an inclusive and environment enabling environment to reduce vulnerabilities in children and the need for intervention under this act. This act is not to promote intervention, uh, adoption. This act is to make sure that there are less and less interventions under this act. You are, you are reading from section three? Section three, principle six, I placed. Sixth one, okay. That's positive measures.
Yeah. Hello, your lordships will appreciate just reminding your lordships of X versus Union of India Malads judgment that my colleagues have relied on. In fact, we were fortunate that your lordships gave us the privilege to assist your lordships in that. Medical termination of pregnancy is the border in our respectful submission where the individual rights end. When it comes to my lords, child that's already born or unborn in the case of ART and surrogacy. It's the welfare of child that alone is the underlying basic principle, Malads. So the parameters will be completely different. Malads, in Navtej, in X, in Nalsa, your lordships were dealing with competing rights. Marriage as an institution, with procreation being such a fundamental core to it. If your lordships read spouse in the Special Marriage Act, my lords, it is going to have impact, my lords, that polycentric spider webs, my lords. That has been already argued. It's by going to have impact the chil children laws the most in ways that we can't even fathom today. Because children need that certainty of love, that conformity, my lords. And the only reason why any other relationship, though there are other kinds of relationships which are recognized in other laws. Go to Malak's great lengths to protect their children from when they can vote, when they can marry, when they can drink, when they can... And Malots, the right of repudiation, the right of non waiver of rights, these are the principles on which they have all been founded. The right to a fresh start, the POXO Act, the entire architecture, consent is immaterial. An independent thought, your lordship said, even a minor spouse would be covered. The entire Malots architecture of your lordship's judgments and the statutes has been from the prism of the child and none other. Well, it's, uh, it's, it's not in my compilation, but there is a, well, uh, some lines from Justice Bhagwati Malads in the judgment of Lakshmi Kant Pandey versus Union of India. This is 1984 to SCC 244. Just want to read two lines to your Lordships Malads. This is the judgment where your Lordships were dealing with the problems of inter-country adoption and the entire infrastructure the entire regime of Juvenile Justice Act and CARA came by virtue of your lordships nudge and push in, these, in this uh, judgment, my lords. Para six, just two lines I want to read to your lordships, my lords. Then aren't you sub 
aren't you serving the petitioner's cause by pointing to this this vacuum and what this court did well it's my respectful submission is your lordship may go, go the slowest when it comes to rights of child yes my lords para 6 just two lines my lords my lords i'm sorry my lords i'll just read there just two lines my lord justice call me uh, kindly bear with me my lords this is uh, uh, 1984 to scc 244 para 6 just two lines my lords it it is obvious that in a civilized society the importance of child welfare cannot be overemphasized because the welfare of entire community its growth and development depends on the health and well being of children children are a supremely important national asset and the future well being of the nation depends on how its children grow and develop the great poet milton put it admirably and he said child shows the man as morning shows the day and study team of social welfare said much to the same effect when it said physical and mental health of a nation is determined largely by the manner in which it is shaped in the early stages just that much this is well taken but uh, you must show children in the context of same sex my lords my respectful submission is from the perspective no. to show to your lordships that this architecture was carefully crafted my lords my lords here heterosexual couples also don't have rights that equate to them my lords there are categories within categories created man and woman don't have same rights a single man and a single woman do not have same rights so from that perspective my lords there is no in fact the only recognition is to the child rights in fact when i, I i'll show to your lordships my lords your lordships saw that section 3 my lords with me my lords then please come to straight away chapter 8 of the juvenile justice act my lords since we had given you 30 minutes you are already now 45 i'm sorry so no no not at all you made a very valid point and you are uh, you never you never uh, you know uh, yeah, yeah everything that you say is always very precise and uh, full of substance so uh, just formulate your submission yeah, no. so that you know forget the submission we we'll read the submissions of Fine. course but if you can just formulate it you know so that then we can take it down and then we can focus on lochus may go through only my note just part b is the portion that i have dealt with i am i'm just going to quickly tell you lochus you can what... just uh, sort of highlight what are the key areas because i think now we've seen the broad uh, architecture etc of the law that you have showed us you can formulate three or four yes. key submissions and then we can uh, my lords my lords may note my lords in the cara adoption guidelines the latest ones are of uh 23rd of september 22 that's at page 228 my lords in this compilation a and just one second let's just take it one second 228 my lords 3rd of september my lords this is 23rd september 22 these are the latest guidelines but i put the old guidelines of 2017 also and there are very little changes the architecture continues in the same manner my party what page my lords this is page uh, 228 in compilation a compilation a and my lords your lordships will pay close attention my lords is my respectful submission to the general principles governing adoption regulation 3 regulation 4 child eligible for adoption my lords this om that came was from steering committee my lords uh, discussions one point that was put was that child is trans how is he dealt with in cara guidelines cara guidelines make no distinction what is the gender of the child what is the disability of the child if any what is the what age of age well it's so protection is given only on two occasions what is the age on which it is given so logic will have a quick look at regulation 5 that gives my lords regulation 4 gives child who's fit for adoption and regulation 5 gives eligibility for adoptive parents that's at page 230 my lords your lordships will see that man woman relationships are immaterial so a man cannot adopt a, a young girl child and it is in that this manner my lords that it has been crafted then two years of stable married relationship is extremely critical my lords that your lordships will find in regulation 5 my lords i also want to draw your lordships attention to my lords seniority in regulation 44 and root search in regulation 47 my lords seniority your lordships will find sorry regulation 44 and regulation 44 deals with seniority of prospective adoptive parents and and my lords regulation 47 deals with root search so every child is entitled to a root search adopted child also 
when either if he becomes a major, he's entitled to do that on, on his own or through his adoptive parents. And my lords, in the entire architecture, only at one place, the biological parents' rights is protected. That is Regulation 47, uh, Subregulation 6, where it says that the right of an adopted child shall not infringe the right of privacy of biological parents. This is the only place. So if biological parents wish to be, wish their privacy to be protected, then this root search will not be given. My lords, uh, I've given in yesterday's compilation a flow chart of how adoptions happen, my lords. My lords, I've given a data also. In fact, I took from Kara data. I'll also find that at page one of my yesterday's compilation. Roughly, my lords, I've given gender-wise. How many uh, boys, how many girls for the last uh, eight, nine years? How many have been given up in a, uh, adoption? How many parents have registered? So roughly, to give your lordships an idea, there are about 30,000 parents who are registered prospective adoptive parents waiting for adoption. And the children, my lords, here who are in the pool are less than 1,500. There is a mechanism for, my lords, you have to reserve every prospect. And then, my lords, there is a mechanism for inter-country. Intra-country is the last resort. In only 1,500 children are available for adoption across India? My lords, yes. And not yet available. They are in the pool. They are there, uh, my lords, mm. because there is a time period that's available for children who are surrendered. They're, they're, Biological mothers or parents can reconsider if they want to. So there is a mechanism that is laid down, Malaj. And then they are put in the, Malaj, the, I've given a flow chart also of how adoption happens. It is only through caring's portal. No interference by humans. It is a portal that is automated, Malaj, completely. The option goes to the next in seniority as a pr prospective or adoptive parents. They are given 48 hours. On, they have to give their ethnic background, their choice, gender choice. Malaj, the home study form that's a schedule in this, Malaj, in these regulations is so exhaustive. You have to disclose not just your health conditions, income, your parents, your other family members, your children. Malaj, it is, it is so comprehensive that it, because it's important. Where the child is, because there is a process of matching that has to happen. After the parent decides that this child might be fit, the, there is a matching that has to happen. And it's only after that matching that the child is, Malaj, given. Just, and just a question out of curiosity. We appreciate yes, how much effort has gone into ensuring that the child is safeguarded in every which way when he or she goes to a home. What is the timeline ordinarily for an application once a party applies, a parent to be applies, and it matures by actually handing over the child to that uh, adoptive parent? I've given that in my... In, uh, that we have data? But three years, Do we have data of neglected it? children who are in care institutions and who are not, who was not adopted, and who after turning 18 go? I mean, have I won't use the word, they are turned us. Because care institutions don't cater to any adult. Yes, At the sure. age of 18, if the child is not adopted, or not cared for in the sense that there is nobody to sponsor Please, her or him and uh, he becomes an adult. Yes, ma'am. What is that? What is the future of that young adult who was a child till then? We have, I mean, there is no data. Actually, there is no data. And if you say 30,000 applicants are, are, are prospective parents, of prospective parents, are, then 1,500 only are available. Yes. Isn't it a matter for concern that we look into every care institution? And there are thousands. We have at least in, in Delhi itself more than 50. My Lord, in this, Tamil Nadu, we have, I think, 250 or so. My Lord, this is the data of, well, if your lordships will see page two of my yesterday's compilation of legally free children available as on 28th of April 2023. The CARA has guidelines prescribed a procedure in which the child has to be declared free for adoption. Alas, it is a very, it's a very razor thin edge walk, Malads. The child is being separated from biological parents, surrendered parents, or orphan Malads. Orphan also, Malads, there is a provision for family adoption because Malads, our culture, we are we are polycentric even in family. There will be nani, dadi, masi, mama, buas, whole lot, Malads, and they have right of uh, my lord, accelerated rights of adoption for family members so there is the whole process if the process is not followed for declaring the child legally free first before giving up in adoption it is going to
I just want to quickly, my lords, just tell your lordships what the rest of my note is. Lordships will just see that, uh, my lords, I have also, my lords, I've adverted to in between the ART and the surrogacy mechanism is also like that. I just, just quickly want to mention this, my lords, this, uh, the National Board of Surrogacy and ART, but they were referred some, my lords, issues that why are you not allowing donor gametes in a surrogacy? My lords, the answer very clearly that has come from them is, Emotional bond of the child is very important. We can't even take one person chance. So they say between the egg, the sperm, and the uterus, at least two of them have to be of biological parents. So while ART allows donors, surrogacy, where you're using the uterus or womb of another woman, altruistic, no commercial, because now the regulation is very clear, you can't use donors. Though, though Malad's quote five will deal with those challenges, but the reasoning that has come is that there has to be a strong emotional bond of the parents who are going for these assisted mechanisms. Malad, we have, Malad, we have given, uh, I think I've covered most of it, Malad. I, I would draw your lordship's attention to Malad's one more aspect, the special provisions with regard to children, uh, to, to women, Malad, is also something that your lordship will have to look at very carefully. We have made a compilation of, my lords, laws where women are protected by virtue of their married or domestic relationships. Thank you, Ms. Vatiwil. And, my lords, one more thing. We made a chart of these 34 countries which have, which have in some manner recognized their civil unions. Though it's a phenomena only of this millennium, my lords, but they have recognized. We made a chart, my lords. We've given a source of that also. 27 of them have gender-neutral rape laws. Social fabric is different, my lords. That chart your lordships will find, my lords, in our compilation C, so at page 1492. The source is also there, my lords. 27 countries, gender neutral, four are gendered, three we could not confirm because they were in languages, my lords, though we tried AI off the internet to get the sources. My lords, I'm very grateful to your thank lordships. You, you. I had, my lords, just written an opening line. Your lordships will permit, I'll read it, my lords, at my closing. The entire endeavor of ours is to present to your lordships that the architecture of child-centric or child welfare laws is very carefully crafted with welfare of child being paramount. Any general declaration reading in spouse instead of husband and wife will make laws relating to adoption, assisted reproduction, surrogate re reproduction completely unworkable. Even for the legislature, my lords, which has the tools of wide consultation, expert and specialist advice, my lords, options of calibrated and gradual solutions, opportunities of amendment, savings and repeal. That to my mind is a very, very important tool, my lords, the option of adoption, savings and repeal. My lords, they will also find it very onerous responsibility to balance on one hand the competing right and on the one hand protecting the parents patria responsibility of the welfare of the child because that is non-negotiable all right thank you Ms. Bhatti. thank you i am very grateful my lords your lordships have given me this opportunity yes mr maninder singh my lord only a couple of minutes my lord because the return submissions are already filed my lord uh, if your lordships kindly have my lord the written submissions coupled with the uh, small compilation of judgments my lord which are in our name because i tried to find out the pdf number i i was instructed my lord no, to we have the written submission yes my lord now i have only two points to make my lord what? in support of the same submission what are the two points you yes my lord compilate. first of all on the point my lord that, that under section 4 of the special marriages act by virtue of in, by process of interpretation my lord it may not be permissible for recognition of same-sex marriages. Just one second. Yes. Well, at under section four of the Special Marriages Act, all sub clauses are conditioned in addition. That's the, I, I don't want to repeat. And what is it. the second point, Mr. Second point is, my lord, on that as late as 2022, my lord, I have placed uh, three, four judgments of your lord, uh, my lord, of the different courts, which, my lord, two are Privy Council and one is from Hong Kong, my lord, where two out of the three judgments, 
where similar rights had been claimed my lord were declined and in one of the judgment constitutional validity of declining this right such a claim which was placed before the court my lord is rejected that is that a provision we say no there would not be any recognition to same sex marriages which was put in question on constitutionality is declined my lord if you lordship will just have a look at the judge uh, small note my lord i'll just Yes. The provision like, like that uh, Doma, the Doma page. Yes, Malod. Doma was struck down. Here you say Doma was upheld. Yes, Malod. Page yes, eighteen. Right. Page eighteen of your submission. Yes, Malod. If your lordship may just give me only make a note, Malod. In para fourteen, I, we have also relied on section one one two of the Indian Evidence Act in support of the first submission, and then Malod, if your lordships come to para sixteen, Malod, which is extremely important. One six. Yes, one six at page seven, where three per provisions of three personal laws, my lord, where there is uh, that ability to procreate, which is one of the condition in section four, is a ground for a divorce. In all the three, my lord, personal laws of uh, Hindus, Christians, and Muslims, which is my lord mentioned in para sixteen. And then, my lord. If your lordship is rightly, my lord, pointing out to yes, those foreign cases you wanted to show. Yes, my lord, page nineteen, bottom, the Italian Constitutional Court, my lord, where the Article twenty nine of that, my lord, Constitution, which my lord is reproduced at page eleven of the note in a because a reference is made earlier. Just make a note, my lord, Article twenty nine. Which my lord, my lord was very wide, much wider than uh, section four of our act, Article and where twenty nine, where Mr. Sorry, my lord, if you lordship may kindly see page eleven, twenty one, page eleven of the note, right, twenty one. Okay, thank you. Page eleven of the note, my lord. Up. This is that Oliari, the yes, judgment lord. of Repub 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 twenty one, Article twenty nine. If you lordship may kindly see the second part of it, marriage is based on the moral and legal equality of spouses. So, my lord, by repressing this word spouses when the right was claimed, my lord, that is declined at bottom, my lord, page 19, bottom, going up to the next page. Can you see para 31? And, my lord, if your lordship permit me, I have kindly come to 20 and 21, extremely relevant, my lord, and your lordship may also keep two things in mind. The argument of discrimination and classification, which Mr. Divedi had also addressed, I don't want to add. And, my lord, the benefits to flow from such a recognition, which, my lord, an argument raised here also, both the arguments raised, both are taken up squarely, my lord, directly, and, my lord, debated, considered, and declined. You cited Oliari as well. As and, my lord, uh, yes, my lord, and your lordships have con considered Oliari in, my lord, the pages judgment, but if your lordship may kindly... Para 34 is your Privy Council judgment. Yeah, and, my lord, Privy Council, in one of the judgment, my lord, just give me a moment. Of Cayman Islands. Page 21, last two paragraphs above 32, both the grounds of discrimination and other benefits which flow from such a re legal recognition of marriage have been considered. And if your lordships kindly come to 22, this is para 34 is the lord first judgment of 2022, my lord, in uh, by the Privy Council, where my lord section 14 one of Bill of Rights was my lord, which is reproduced in para 34, and then my lord, the consideration thereof is up to page 24 of my note, and my lord, which was rejected. Kindly come to para 36, which is that section 53, my lord of domestic partnership act which created a prohibition against such a recognition it's extremely important my lord for your lordship kind consideration the domestic partnership act of 2018 where section 15 3, 53 created a prohibition the constitutional validity was challenged and my lord after consideration at para 76 and 77 of that judgment which is reproduced at page 24 and 25 it is rejected, my lord. In Hong Kong, my lord, which is para 37, which is also, my lord, 2022, a similar, my lord, uh, discussion has taken place. Similar contentions have been considered. And if your lordships kindly come to page 27, my lord, para 77.
kindly read just i'll just read para 77 your lordship may uh, kindly have a have regard to the other portion and i put place the judgment copy also in the second compilation kindly come to para 77 in terms of access to the institution of marriage it comes concern the special status of marriage which is a distinct concept from the benefit arising from it the difficulty or even perceived hardship involved in obtaining the benefits of means of legal challenges does not justify a shortcut bypassing bl 37 malot which is basic law 30 all right mr mind the thing thank, thank, thank you thank you mr malot and judgment sir malot enclosed the full text of the judgment yes, in place for your lord i am deeply thank obliged malot thank you mr mind the thing please your lord sir malot i appear for the kill bharat sant samiti i am not going to repeat anything lord most of the points are already covered in fact i am adopting lord all the points i have already filed written submissions only two points lord i wish to highlight a lord the concept of marriage in the indian society is creation of an institution for example in the hindu law it's a sacrament muslim law it's a contract the concept of marriage in Indian society is? Is, Lord, an institution by itself. Whether in Hindu law it's a sacrament, so it is a divine angle. In the, in the Mohammedan law, Lord, it's a contract. Now, various facets. Now, Lord, concept of same-sex marriage, therefore, would be virtually like an attack on the very institution of marriage which has been traditionally known in this country. And Lord, we have to be very clear about it. There is no doubt. There is no doubt that in Nautage recognizes the right to privacy. Lord, right to privacy is recognized, but your lordships have seen that Lord observation where they have said, by this we don't mean the marriage. It's the union. Right. What the is second it? point, second Simple. point, Lord, that I want to tell your lordships is, if your lordships have a look at our, the sections 19, 20, 21A of the Special Marriage Act. Lord, if you marry under this law, Special Marriage Act, then it's not connected to the Hindu marriage act, but it also provides that the two Hindus can marry. Now, if two male Hindus or not two female Hindus marry thereafter, what implications is going to have on the other law? That also is required to be seen. Creating Lord a mere civil union is fine. That therefore there would be no problem about a civil union or a declaration that they need not be harassed or because it's, the prohibition part Lord is a different aspect. But creating an institution of marriage itself, giving them all other rights, Lord, will interfere with all other. So you are saying that there is no problem with a civil declaration of a civil union per se? But civil union, Lord, and that already has been given in the right to privacy. By privacy, you may, Lord, in fact, in my written submissions, I have highlighted and I have said so. That declaration of civil union is a different thing. But in so far as creating them as an institution of marriage will be virtually. And number two, Lord, India as a country, one has to see, like Roscoe Pound said, law is a concept of social engineering. It has to keep time. But India has not, Lord, reached that level. Where, Lord, this institution of marriage can be permitted at this stage. Lord, the rest of it, your lordships would get in my written submissions. I'm not troubling because there are other lawyers also Thank who have you. Thank you, Mr. I'm obliged. Grateful to uh, Mr. Sai Deepak will argue now. Or Mr. Who, who, uh, Manisha will argue. Yes. Lord, the state has filed an intervention application seeking to respond to various petitions praying inter alia for a judgment and uh, judgment declaring the marriage between persons belonging to the LGBTQI community as legally valid in the context of the Special Marriage Act in the Hindu Marriage Act. Lord, my Lord's Ladyship, I've had the privilege of hearing the arguments of the Attorney General, the Learned Solicitor General and other counsels preceding me. I'll abide by the two, uh, the two re uh, regulations circumscribed by the Honorable Court, one being the time constraint the other being not reading out any judgments. Lord, I formulated a few points, my Lord, for consideration of the Honorable Court. But even those, my Lord, I shall not be 
uh, going into in detail. Let me just brief, uh, briefly. Can you relate. formulate that, Ms. Lavkumar? So we can just formulate. formulated them. Malod, I'll just briefly read it. Okay. There's only one point on which I propose to take the Honorable Court, Malod. Uh, my four points which I formulated relate to reading up, reading down, updation of the existing law, governing marriage, especially the SMA, to include non-heteronormative unions would lead to altering of the cultural edifice. It was substantially already dealt with by the other councils. I wouldn't delve any further into it. Necessity for a wide consultative process and comprehensive deliberation by the legislation also has been extensively dealt with by the Learned Solicitor General. This is what I wish to further Milod, uh, highlight, this and the next point. It is not a case of exclusion or prohibition, but a case of non-inclusion in a targeted legislation enacted with special aims and objects. And Milod, this taking this further from the deliberations, as transpired in the court yesterday, tracing any right of recognition by whatever name called within or outside the framework of matrimonial laws would re result in the creation of a new institution, the horse, the democratic process. Milod, the inevitable uh, ripple effect on numerous legislations. And Milod, of course, Milod, submi submissions with regard to the Foreign Marriage Act would get covered in the submissions already made with regard to the SMA. If time permitting, I'll make a two minute submission on that. Milod, marriage as a socially recognized institution and the foundation of the Indian family unit. Milod, I wish to submit that it is marriage between a man and a woman is at the core of the family. The Indian society is founded and organized around this concept of the family. Milod, the rules of marriage continue to evolve, but they remain grounded in organizing of heterosexual relationships. Milod, the interest of the state, considering the importance of this institution, Milod, the interest of the state in regulating of marriage is Milord lies in the overarching interest to preserve so, uh, social order, ensure progression of society in a legitimate manner, and to regulate matrimonial conduct. In that sense, Milord, marriage as a legal institution is not a private affair between consulting, consenting adults. It is a public act between two consenting adults who are then conferred a legal status by the state upon fulfillment of statutory requirements. Milod, I then point out, would point out that the SMA is part of a wider spectrum of all enactments relating to what we may be broadly calling matrimonial laws, whether in the realm of personal laws, whether SMA, whether FMA, all are heteronormative in structure. Milod, I have accepted by way of a table that all these laws carry certain features which would be considered as the core fundamentals or the thrust of the legislation. Namely, all of them refer to as heterosexual unions. All of them prescribe monogamy. All of them prescribe minimum age of marrying. And all of them carry prescriptions of prohibited degrees. They may vary from legislation to legislation, but all of them are uniform in that sense. Milud, the fundamental of marriage, marriage, before my Lord, is a matter which has very serious com uh, which has very serious consequences in terms of its depth and breadth, considering that my lords are examining not just the validity of an act, namely the SMA or the FMA. My lords are examining the very edifice of family institution, social structure, myriad of matrimonial enactments, and Based on those myriad of matrimonial enactments, my lords have succession enactments, divorce uh, provisions, maintenance provisions, adoption and maintenance. So it's an entire regime which is regulated. And all of it which is based on heteronormative. So it is an entire regime. My Lord, looking at the act in isolation, my Lord, would not be possible considering that it is all on the same platform. All heteronormous, all with these embargoes, all having regulatory nature, and all on the same platform. And built on this is entirely a regime of other enactments, and more importantly, social legislation, benevolent legislation, namely for Evidence Act, 
113A presumption or dowry debt presumption 113B or Milod dowry debt act itself or Milod Stridhan under the Hindu Marriage Act, Section 8. So there is an entire edifice which has been, cre which is created around the institution of marriage. You may read para 6 if you don't mind. Please, my Lord. Page 11 of your notes. The rules of marriage continue to evolve, well, but they remain social. grounded. Sorry, this is para 6 of page 11, social page institutions. After the chart, the chart which you have given, yes. So two pages later, this is part of note uh, sub para three. The, yes. Yes. Please read that. You know, the institution of marriage. Yes. The social institution. Institu social institutions. That's PDF thirteen. PDF. Uh, PDF. PDF thirteen. Yes. PDF thirteen. Printed eleven. Thirteen, Baba. Come, karo. 46 page, May pages, I, paper book. Give me my compilation from India. Social institutions. Please. Social institutions consist largely of interlocking set of ideas that regulate or affect the way people actually understand and behave across interpersonal relationships. The meaning of social institution matters and the institutions that bear it serve to structure our experiences and steer them in a particular direction. They define our goals, focus our attention on those goals, and direct us towards them. Changing the public meaning of a social institution leads to changing the institution itself. The concept of same-sex marriage is not within the percept of Indian personal law and legislation. Oblige me. So, my Lord, I have pointed out that the rules of marriage may continue to evolve, and they need must but they continue to remain grounded in organizing heterosexual relationships. We have additional grounds for divorce being conferred. Over a period of time, my Lord, even 21A seems to be is enacted in the provisions of the SMA to ensure that now Hindu laws relating to succession, et cetera, would be made applicable and they must evolve, but the normative structure still remains heterosexual. My Lord, taking further from that, my Lord, the, over and above the interest of the state in regulating, Milod, I wish to point out to the Honorable Court the, con, Milod, the argument at which Milod, the deliberation rested yesterday was with regard to tracing any right with regard to cohabitation into Article 21 as expounded Milod, in Navtej. So Milod, Navtej has already granted them the right to cohabit, physically, emotionally, sexually, unfettered. My Lord, my submission is that co contemplating tracing of any right, of any legal recognition, of the right to cohabit, would amount to creating a new institution outside, my Lord, the legal framework. My Lord, an endeavor was made, my Lord, an endeavor was made to read the SMA in a gender neutral manner. And the Honorable Court went through elaborately provisions as contained in Section 4C, provisions as contained in 4D. 4C was with regard to age, reading in a gender neutral manner, age. For male, it was 21 years. Female, it was 18 years. As sought to be made applicable to gays, possibly yes. To lesbians, yes. But they are not representative of the entire community. Milod LGBTQIA. So there are. You, could you just, uh, you, you've used a very interesting expression, uh, juxtaposing the argument of the petitioners to the bouquet of rights. Yes. You call this as the sanctification. That's right. The sanctification narrative. Could you just explain this in two minutes? Uh, what do you mean by the sanctification narrative in the context of heterosexual mm -hmm. uh, relationships, heterosexual marriages? Milod, my, Lord, my submission is that this principle of sanctification lies in the fact that the institution of marriage predated any legislation. Legislation, legislation recognize this social, cultural, pluralistic acceptance of this heterosexual union 
across societies, communities, and regulated it. Regulated it in a manner that was most beneficial to public order, sustainability, procreation, ensuring the best upbringing of children. And the regulation does not end at marriage. The enactment provides not only entry points, also exit points, the manner in which you exit, an organized mm -hmm. manner, grounds for divorce, maintenance, who gets responsibility for it. So this is an entire a genre, a, milieu, a regime created. Now recognition, the, the petitioners endeavored to look into this SMA as well as the FMA and read it in gender neutral manner. Milud, hypothetically, just taking the example of prohibited relationships under section 4D. My act, please. Milud, under 4D. Thank you, Mr. Yes, no, my lord. Would my lords, I need to make one important submission. Yes. If my lords be pleased to turn to my note, which I forwarded yesterday. I wish to hurriedly go through that. I'll take five more minutes. My lord, it's a five page note mailed yesterday. Yes. My lord, part three consequences of any declaration. Sorry, Ms. Lavkumar, there is a five, there's a nine page note. Nine page note, I stand correct. It's a nine page note. Nine. I'm only going on part three. That's all I wish to, Milod, read. Part three. Milod, it would be page number three. Page number three, part three. Yes. Milod, any declaration of the, from this honorable court would have very serious ramifications. The edifice of matrimonial laws and ancillary laws are extremely regulated. Sans any regulatory regime, a judicial recognition would create serious social and legal issues. My laws, please do note, section four had the bun a bunch of regulations, age prescription, prohibition related, um, prohibited relationships, bigamy, et cetera. Any recognition would become a law within the meaning of article 141, and it would be binding on my Lord, the entire judiciary and plethora of lit litigation come seeking recognition. But the host this regulatory regime, tomorrow, my lord, Navtej only talks of consult, uh, consenting adults. What about prohibited relationships? What about bigamy? My lord, there is no regulatory regime. Any recognition de this regulatory regime would have serious consequences. I also point out, my lord, that entry five, list three of schedule five, schedule seven empowers the legislature to enact laws with regard to marriage, divorce, adoption, wills, etc. This court, my lord, ordinarily would not arrogate it to itself, the lawmaking prerogative. My lord, it is further submitted that the petitioner's apprehension is completely misconceived that the parliament would not look into it. Yes. My lord, the apprehension of the petitioners in seeking recognition of either marriage, a relationship akin to marriage, or by any name called, is misconceived on the ground that the legislature would decline to examine the concerns of the entire community, seeking legal recognition within the members of such community. And it is only this honorable court which would declare. You know, my submission, this is a circuitous route. Ordinarily, the honorable court would leave it to the parliament. It has various multifaceted dimensions, all to be deliberated, social consensus, a large number of debates, and conflicting views. Those adversarial views are important to to evolve, my lord, a consensus on this issue, when to be done, how to be done, rather than go to the parliament, the first endeavor was read into the SMA. When not fitting into the structure of the SMA, now seek a declaration apart from the SMA, which, ha which would have even more serious ramifications. And all arguments which are made applicable in the context of SMA would be equally applicable, my lord, in this context. My lord, would my lords now turn to para Thank 20? You. I think we'll close it here, Miss. Uh... Just one, just one submission, my lord. Yes. By giving a declaration of the nature contemplated, my lord, this honourable court would unintentionally 
be foreclosing debates in society, that we have foreclose the rights of society. We have Mr. Min and Milud, such a Milud, finally, Milud, mm -hmm. such a declaration would hamper the genuine, organic, and sustainable change in society, which is reflective of the democratic mm -hmm. ethos of the working of the constitution. Thank you, Ms. Milud. It is my. I conclude by saying that Milud, it's not a simple class of mere declaration of a result. It has very, very serious ramifications in considering the entire marriage regime and the ancillary social laws which are All involved. Right. Thank you, Mr. Grateful. Thank you. No, we'll first hear Mr. Sai Deepak. He's got an order which has been given to us. Yes, Mr. Sai Deepak. Can you just formulate what will be your line of uh, argument? With my Lord's permission, given that I have only 20 minutes and which I expect may not even happen, I'll do my best to simply formulate my position and as opposed to reading out from anything, kindly allow me to just engage in the bench because my written submissions capture my position that's already been shared. So there are two aspects. Just give us one second. We'll just Please. go to your written submission. So as we are arguing, we can also uh, keep a track of your submission. If I may, uh, an additional written submission. Additional submissions or the original one? The Addi original. The additional is a one page note and I'll anyway address it. So my lords could perhaps refer to the first written submission. So what is broadly the line of... Uh, Milaj, if I may say so, the first law of thermodynamics effectively encapsul encapsulates the entire position when it comes to physics and from there or uh, corollaries flow. So the central position that is effectively placed before my lords is with respect to the distinction between fetters and powers, which is to say that this particular area which the petitioners seek to espouse before my lords is an area which falls within either prohibited areas or is it something that falls within the area for my lords' adjudication? That is the central issue. And I think that Maybe. is the forest that is thought to be presented before my lords. I am here to perhaps unpack a few leaves for my lords' consideration. The question of legislative competence is just one aspect of the issue which hinges on separation of powers. But I go a step further, which is to say that when the petitions raise the question of change in heteronormative attitudes, does the society have a right of agency to participate in these proceedings or not, at least in this particular issue or not? Because this is not a question of separation of territories between different organs of the state, but it fundamentally hinges on the right or the agency of the society to participate in this particular discussion. And that is the central problem in these kind of issues and subjects are taken up by the court of law, <laughs> as opposed to leaving it for legislative prerogative to apply its mind. Point number two, during the course of these proceedings of the last two weeks, quite a few times I've heard the submission being made that it's a liberal democracy, it's a liberal document, it's a liberal document, so on and so forth. Does it mean that social conservatism has, absolute, conservatism has absolutely no place within the meaning of the Constitution? Does it mean that the society does not have the right to draw a few red lines to basically say thus far and no further? That is the central question. I represent a women's organization which equally represents the right of children and therefore as a civil society organization, the question that is being raised is that the nature of the prayers raised in the petition has the consequence of individualizing a socio-centric institution such as marriage. Which is to say, as long as it is a transaction that takes place between two individuals who are consenting and who are not prohibited by any prohibition of degrees, so to speak, the rest of the society has absolutely no say as far as this institution is concerned. This, I'm sorry to say, fundamentally demeans the institution of marriage and takes away its social character. The, so these are the meta questions that I think which arise for consideration before this honorable court when these kind of petitions are filed. I'm sorry to say this and, and let me try and perhaps tone down the rigor of my submission to the extent of saying I believe that they have a cause. I just don't believe they have a case. The cause is different from the case. And it is important for the court to seriously consider one aspect here. When there are issues of legislative competence, there's another figure, so to speak, which is involved. And that figure's powers come under Article 111 of the Constitution, which is to say that if a legislative proposal ultimately meets with the consent of both the houses, ultimately it has to go to the Honorable President. And the Honorable President also has the power to recommend amendments to a legislation. Therefore, this is not just a question of legislative prerogative or legislative sovereignty, either from an external or an internal perspective, but there are multiple dramatis personae and stakeholders of this particular equation, the society being the chief, because ultimately the petitions raise the question of changing the paradigm with respect to heteronormative attitudes of legislations in general. It is not just about the SMA. Plus, my lords is not dealing with the religion-specific legislation here, it is the SMA, 
which means all the more the society's participation when it comes to the SMA is warranted, is mandated, is compulsory. Because at least if it were to be with respect to certain, let's say, religion-specific legislations, it can be said that there is an identifiable group which has a locus to argue here. But when it comes to the SMA, it can't be the argument that only those who subscribe to the values of SMA are allowed to participate in these proceedings. Secondly, as has been already submitted, Section 21 of the SMA has a direct bearing on personal laws. So even with respect to SMA, the society has a right to participate. The reason why the additional written submissions become relevant is because I filed an annexure, which is the Manual for Parliamentary Procedure of 2019, which was published by the Ministry of Parliamentary Affairs. And that particular manual, so to speak, has Chapter 9, which deals with the business of legislation. Close to 30 clauses exist detailing the manner in which a legislative proposal is to be considered in the first place, how the ball is set rolling. And in that, if I may, if I may just refer to my uh, additional written submission here, I'll walk my lots through the relevant portion here. Additional written submission, my lots. Has a copy been given to the other side? Please hand it over. We have it here. Please, my lots. So para one effectively has captured my position with respect to article 111, but the second paragraph is where I placed reliance on the manual of parliamentary procedures. Does my lords have it? Yes, okay. we have. For the benefit of the bench, may I just read this out? Which para? Uh, para 9. 2, page 2. Uh, para 9.2? Exactly. Exactly. So para 2, so I'm reading out from the written submission because that oh, oh, okay. captures. Right, right, right. And the uh, the document itself is, annex is annexed. So let me just read out the submission, my lords. May I? Yes. Please. Does the rest of the bench have it? Yes, in addition okay. to the above. Please, in addition to the above. So can I just read out para one for the sake of completion? I'm so sorry, may I? Please. Yes. It is humbly submitted that apart from circumvention of legislative prerogative and sovereignty, violation of the doctrine of separation of powers seriously impinges and encroaches upon presidential prerogative under Article 111 of the Constitution. Under the said article, firstly, the Honorable President has the right to receive the bill for his assent after it is passed by both houses of parliament. This translates to countervailing obligations on the Parliament to present the bill for the Honourable President's assent. Further, under the article, not only does the Honourable President have the right to withhold assent, but also the power to recommend amendments and also reconsideration of certain specific provisions in a certain bill. Now, paragraph number two. In addition to the above, reliance is also placed on the Manual of Parliamentary Procedures issued by the Ministry of Parliamentary Affairs in July 2019, which contains a specific chapter, Chapter 9, titled Legislation. My apologies for the speed. I'm just trying to keep up with the time here. Please. The said chapter spells out in great detail the steps to be undertaken in promulgating a legislation. Critically, Clause 9.2 deals with the pre-drafting stage of a legislative proposal, which is divided into four broad stages that include consultation between the concerned ministry to which the legislative proposal relates and the Ministry of Law and Justice. Critically, the latter ministry shall review the legislative proposal for legal and constitutional feasibility, validity, as also, and here I quote, necessity and desirability of such a proposal. Clause 9.5 envisages approval of the cabinet followed by an assent, assentment, sorry, assent, and, sorry, assessment under clause 9.6 of the expenditure involved. Critically, clause 9.7.1 envisages securing the recommendation of the Honorable President after the introduction of the bill, which is different from the assent sought under Article 111. Then, my lords, clause 9.12 speaks of the possible referral of that particular bill to a select committee or a joint committee or for circulation for public opinion. If I may say so, and I say this with the deepest of respect and the greatest of humility that I can command at this point, that the judicial mechanism cannot be a substitute to any of these steps, especially when it comes to such a serious issue. And I draw from Hindu law here that the purpose of marriage or the, the object of dampatya is a child, is procreation. Now, therefore, comes the central question with respect to all the permutations and combinations that my lot posed by way of circumstances. What happens to a single child? What happens to a single parent? What happens if it's a homosexual single parent? So on and so forth. Allow me to answer this question in a slightly different fashion. Public morality is decided by normative attitudes. The norm is decided primarily by the mainstream. This is not a majoritarian argument. This is a statement of fact in a democracy. Point number two. When normative attitudes are sought to be revisited, to say that those who constitute the norm don't get to participate in this discussion, because that particular process and that particular, let's say, dance of democracy is sought to be circumvented by using the instrumentality of the court to secure a certain outcome, I'm sorry to say, defeats the purpose of advocacy. Those who are interested in convincing the society are expected to engage with the rest of the society to make good their cause. 
the judiciary cannot be a substitute to this particular process because then that effectively replaces societal cogitation with, I'm sorry to use the words, judicial paternalism. That can't happen. Three. The benefit of revisitation of a judgment with respect to such sensitive issues, even if it exists by way of clarifications, I'm sorry to say is not an adequate substitute, it's a suboptimal substitute. Because if the principle that has been established by several judgments is that a judgment is not to be read in the manner of a statute, then there is no precision which can be imparted to the language or findings. And therefore, the principles of statutory interpretation don't apply. So we are left with greater uncertainty. Please, may I? Please. The point that I'm perhaps trying to make, and which is what I'm trying to draw the court's attention to, is that the Nalsa judgment that they placed reliance upon extensively, there is a plus and there is perhaps a downside to it. The plus is the judgment must be read in its context. And the issue was the recognition of a third gender. That was what it was limited itself to. And therefore, to extrapolate the findings of the particular judgment, which primarily concerned itself with self-perception, self-identification in the context of gender identity, to extend it to a marital transaction or a marriage-like transaction is to read a judgment for what it is not. Secondly, there are only three in places. I think we, we perhaps are aware of yeah. how to read these judgments. Please. We please. don't need it, need to be taught. No, Milas, I'm sorry. I understand. I'm just placing reliance on this. I'm just making yes, a we sum. understand that these are please, contexts. Please. Whether they're analogies or not is up to us. My lots. Please, Milas. I'm grateful. The second point is, in fact, on a closer reading of this particular judgment, certain inconsistencies emerge between the two opinions of the very same bench in terms of what constitutes sexual orientation, what con constitutes gender identity. Now, that is natural because there is a discussion that's going on there. It is not to be read in the same manner as a statute. In fact, therefore, the judgment, which doesn't exactly help their position, also points to a certain problem with respect to judicial revisitation of some of these aspects. And the judgment of just of, of Arun Kumar of the Madras High Court is actually in the teeth of the submissions being made here, which is to say narrow language being expanded through judicial interpretation contrary to legislative intent and history is to rewrite legislative history and judicial reinscription, which is retrospective in nature, may not be exactly permissible. That's one. Then uh, the submission with respect to international law, all the general instruments apart, the Yogyakarta principle specifically clause 24.E specifically leaves it to countries to decide if they wish to have recognition with respect to marital unions. So it's not as if there is some kind of a binding precedent here or there's not, there's no international instrument that's, that says that you shall. I'm not arguing for it should not be. Kindly, let this caveat is important. I'm simply saying, if the door of judicial intervention in this matter is open for one case, even though the cause may be worthy, what does it do for the future? Because ultimately, it's not just a, it's not just a question of one matter. It's a question of the future as well. So therefore, there are specific aspects that relate to the issue in question, and there are general aspects that relate to the separation of powers and societal participation that go well beyond this matter. In light of this, my only humble submission is that there are other issues to be dealt with, and allow me to just point this out and use this particular forum to advocate only one aspect, having actually engaged with certain transgender activists and also having worked with them. I know for a fact that one of their biggest problems is trafficking, them being pushed into prostitution, them not having legitimate livelihoods. I am not reducing or dismissing anybody's concerns with respect to what is their priority. Let me clarify that. I'm not making the submission at all. But these are certain Maslow's needs which have to be completed first and which have to be addressed first before we get to the next step. 
that's all i have to submit i'm so grateful for the kind please it's great to be privileged now uh mr imar uh, shamshad I have submitted four pages notes, my lord. We'll have a look at the note. Can you just identify the most critical yes. point that you want to make? Uh, two points I've, I'm trying to convey, my lord, because Mr. Sibyl, Mr. Just uh, go, come straight to the point. Uh, they have they have already argued. My lord, as far as the matrimonial legislations are concerned, those statutory legislations, 50 onwards, even in those legislations, there are a scope of customs, practices, which have been practiced for a long time. Undefined practices are part of those legislations. I have cited, for example, only four, two from Hindu, uh, 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 related uh, Hindu religion law and two from Muslim. For example, section 3A and 29 from Hindu Marriage Act, my lord. Yes. Section 3A of Hindu Adoption and Maintenance Act 1956. They take custom within the statutory regime. Those are not defined. So what they, is the, how do you formulate it? My Lord, in, even in the statutory regime, undefined customs and practices yes. of community and those who yes. follow religious beliefs have been made part of the statute. See, 4C proviso of the Special Marriages Act. My Lord. He itself talks of subject to custom and then it says how custom is to be, uh, you know, proved. My Lord. So, so that is there and we don't know ultimately what custom is finally proved in certain facts and circumstances. That, that will depend upon case to case basis. Same way in Muslim uh, related legislations, my Lord. In section 3 of Muslim Women Protection of Divorce 1996 Act, there are practices of Muslims which have been recognized. 1939 Act of Dissolution of Muslim Women, that sets out ground for divorce, but there is a provision which says that other grounds which is acknowledged in Muslim personal law. So those have to come from uncodified sources of personal law. What is the next point? Next point, my lord, even if we talk a special marriage act, my lord, section reading of section 19 to 21a takes us to custom within 3b t73 of Hindu Succession Act. Section 19 to 21, if we read it together, detailed discussion has taken place on this, my lord. It takes us to Hindu Succession Act 3BD73. And they are uncodified customs. All right. What is the next? If we, if we go to 271A, my lord, just then that takes us to Hindu Adoption and Maintenance Act 3A, read with section 10, clause 3. So this is one, my lord. Second, as far as declaration is concerned. The, 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 the declaration that has been uh, sought for from that side. I completely adopt the, uh, the arguments of Mr. Devedi, Learned Solicitor General, Mr. Kapasi. But, my Lord, if your Lordship declares this right, I just want to flag one or two problems. Within the realm of personal laws, those that that relationship may not be recognized and it is not recognized in many personal laws at the same time we have certain statutory bodies which only regulate religious affairs like hajj committees like certain shrine boards they only relate regulate religious affairs 
like if somebody goes tomorrow to Hajj committee and says, I have constitutionally declared right to remain as union and I want to go on Hajj as couple, married couple. to wrap up now, yes. So, so that, I have two, three examples that I have said. Let me look at the... These are the problems which, which, which will be faced by even a statutory body that you... All right. So, thank so, you, Mr. Shamshad. I'm, I'm deeply upon, obliged. I'll call upon Ms. Priya Aristotle, please. Thank you, Mr. Shamshad. Thank you. I'm deeply upset. Sorry to cut you short, but you know, we are now. No Thank problem. You. We'll read your, we'll read your note. Okay. Yes, Ms. Shamshad. Much obliged, my Lord. I stand here representing a student, uh, Jerusha Joel, and I have three lines of argument only, my Lord. One is about the history and the marriage aspect, which is social, and about the canvas, which my Lord opened up. Normally on a canvas, we want to see who has You've given us written submissions? Yes. All so right. I will not. Uh, get deep into it, but how much is necessary? And right. third is um, the ASG addressed about the adoptions and the kids. But what about our children who are going to school? They have been receiving a lot of propagation which has been going on, and uh, we just need a little protection for them at this tender age when this is being done on a day to day basis in the name of gender clubs. So the first is, um, as we all know, the word normally used here, even in IPC, was sodomy. The origin of this is the sin of Sodom, which comes from the Bible. And, what's, the, uh, what's the core of the submission? Tell us the core of the submission. I just want to bring up the historic aspect. No, no, don't give us history. Give us the core of the submission. Minute, that is all. Yes. So I just want to say that we are not following the Victorian law, but it originated 5,000 years back, and it's basically the Jewish law that we follow. And, um, and that is how all this was abolished, like adultery, monogamy, sodomy, sati, everything was there, but all that came with the reformation, which was gone on with it. Now they've come for legalizing it. As long as they do, people do not come to legislate certain things, there are many things that are happening. Like I've visited ashrams, like because my family comes from a set of places where they the are not is, legality we got you up. all. Yeah. They, they, in fact, there must be incest. It has to be in the form of legislate. Exactly. But if sure. these people, this group is going to come and ask my lords for legislating, it definitely it's a no but if it is going to happen behind the doors nobody is going to be bothered everybody's made that point now i think we can yes yes anything and that's else, why I anything think... else which has not been covered absolutely my lord now going behind the canvas who is behind the canvas we internationally it's not just in this court i was listening to the un argue the u.s court arguments the audio of it literally it's a replica of what's happening there and in many other nations there are no new submissions that are made so All right, thank you miss aristotle i think it goes there yes thank you miss aristotle yeah I now, just, what about mr one yes. one thing about the u.n agenda my lord recently not very long back recently i have submitted my thing so i'm just not going to get into it but very recently they have come with the uh, uh principles of more than 20 principles and principle number 16 is about consensual sexual conduct with the new principles coming in my lords doesn't have to worry about the age factor whether it's going to be 18 or 21 because un has come up with a guideline saying that you don't have to even if they are minors if they're going to consent for sexual things it cannot be criminalized and again it goes on for 18 it says sexual orientation anybody can guide a minor to get into it comes there, my lord. I have marked it at page 119 to 144 are my uh, UN agenda things. So again, our children who are going to school, every other day there is a propagation of this that is going on, and they need to be protected. In Russia, there's a thing against propagation of... Uh, thank you, Ms. Aristotle. Now we'll hear uh, Ms. Manisha Narayan Agarwal. Much obliged. Thank you, Ms. Uh, thank you, Ms. Aristotle. What's the punch point? Punch point, Your Lordship, only. Lordship, my punch point is in the first paragraph of my written submissions, Your Lordship. The question yes. that I ask myself is, can there be a declaration of, uh, can, there be a decl can there be a declaration that an absence of recognition is void? And what is, what will be the consequence of such a declaration, my Lord? Will the consequence of such a declaration be creation of the recognition? And there is only one parallel which I will draw is, there was a time when our statute recognized joint and several liability partnerships, but did not recognize limited liability partnerships. Could someone take up the Partnership Act as law under Article 13.2 and pray to this honorable court to recognize, to, to declare as void the absence of uh, limited liability partnerships? All right. Thank you. Thank you. You got the point. The... Thank you. 
Mr. Rajobi Varghese. Sasmit Patra. Yes. I'm representing two organizations. I'm also at a personal capacity as a member of parliament of Rajya Sabha. Yes, Mr. Patra. Your Lordships, I have two basic points, two minutes and I'm done. First, capacity of parliament that has not been taken up. You've talked about separation of powers, various things, capacity of parliament. I'll elaborate on that. Second, just role of second, politics. Just one second, I'll just... I'm sorry, Your Lordship, I'm having to rush because of the time. But... What, what is the argument? Mr. Uh, the argument is capacity of parliament. I've filed a three-page uh, submission report in which the fourth para, if you see, there is a table. Just give us one minute. Mm -hmm. What we'll do is we'll come back after lunch. We'll give you five minutes after lunch. So Thank you, Your Lordship. Deeply obliged. Mm -hmm. I need five, five to Certainly. Seven. I'll not repeat anything. Certainly. I'm I'm not, uh, the for the... Of course, of course, you're not grateful. Your Lordship's leave to upload the note in rejoinder, my Lord, which will be the basis for the submission today. All right, yes, certainly. Great. Malotan 501.13 Council is appearing online, my Lord. Come back after lunch.
dealing with 42 laws of this country. That is my first part of the point that I'm trying to make, that if we are going forward in this matter, which will have wider ramifications, will have impact on other laws, then this could be a parameter to look at. Second, if you go to para five-year lordship, I've spoken about the JPCs, the select committees, I'll not focus on that. The next one is para six, surrogacy bill, sensitive, sent to a select committee, dealt with appropriately. The capacity and the functionality of the parliament. Page three, the mediation bill 2021, which is going to be tabled in the parliament very soon. 23 meetings have gone through it, your lordship, to the department related standing committee on personnel, public grievances, law and justice. To do what? To ensure that we have a foolproof law. To have this kind of a debate and discussion, the appropriate forum is the parliament. I was a member of this committee, your lordship, when this mediation bill was being discussed. And the reason why I have tried to build on the first point, and I'll stop my first point here, is the capacity and the capability and the functionality of the parliament. I'll go to the second point, your lordship. I'll not take more than five minutes. I've committed to it. I won't. Second, role of polity. Your lordship, we may talk about it as a social construct. We may talk about it as a legal construct. We may talk about it as a social legal construct. But unless you are able to flesh this out through the role of the polity, which has been absent so far, then it will not be very fruitful to be able to broad base it and take it right down to the bottom of the pyramid. In doing so, the role of the polity at this matter, we may have a declaration, Your Lordship, but the role of the polity in this matter has been completely silent. Where can we find that? We can find it through the parliament. Your Lordship, therefore, my point number 10, voice of 1.4 billion people. You have 788 members of parliament, 245 Rajya Sabha, 543 Lok Sabha, 12 of them appointed by the Honorable President of India. Wouldn't be befitting to actually send something as widely impacting as this to the parliament to be dealt with appropriately and more holistically, where the canvas to deal with this would be much wider than the canvas that we're looking at. Third, and my final point, and I close, is the impact on public policy due to legislative absence. Your Lordships, let's assume for a moment we have a declaration. How do we execute that declaration? In Navtej, you have a declaration, fundamental right, taken up. In Vishakha, it went into a law, sexual harassment law. In terms of Shaira Bano, a law, a legislation. So whenever you find that there is a declaration, it goes into a law and thereby has public policy sets that are added to it. In this case, because the parliament does not have or hasn't dealt with it, we may have a declaration, but the parliament may not go and dispose it off as a law. In that case, the declaration would be there. Writ of mandamus may be there, but the public policy precepts and the public policy implementation on the ground may be difficult. What would inter alia happen? You might have contempt notices coming. Therefore, Your Lordship, I'll close here, my five minutes are over, that these three basic parameters, capacity and functionality of the parliament, role of the polity, and impact on public policy due to legislative absence in this matter are extremely crucial. My humble and limited prayer, send it to the parliament. I'm not going to the merits of the matter at all. Whether it is right, whether it's wrong, I'm not going into it. I'm going on the very simple principle, send it to parliament, let the parliament deal with it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Patra. Deeply obliged. This was Mr. Patra, the council, of course, arguing, not, the, uh, not Mr. Patra as the parliamentarian. <laughs> Deeply grateful, Your Lord. Thank you, Mr. Patra. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Lord. Shri. I've been Thank goading you. him, Melis, to come more to court. Yes. He's slowly yes. starting, Melis. I've been <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. We will also respectfully join in that chorus. <laughs> yes. Uh, we now hear Mr. Atulesh Kumar. May I please note? My Lord, on my behalf, Mr. Nadkarni has already submitted, but I wish to make one point, my Lord. I, although I am uh, adopting the submission of Lord Ness Solicitor General, Mr. Divedi and uh, Dadar, my Lord, that in para 7 of my note, I have said, even that your Lordship told that we are not, you are not considering the personal law and uh, considering only a special marriage act, my Lord, but...
A special marriage act is not in isolation. It affects the other personal rights and family law, Bilod. So, for Hindu, uh, Hindu is concerned, Bilod. So, in any any divergence or deletion and addition in the special marriage act, so far to include their submission, Bilod, it will uh, certainly affect the uh, us, us, Bilod. Larger than larger ramification. Been argued by others also. Yes, so, Bilod. Anything else that you would like to say, which will not be? I am adopting, Bilod, the same, Bilod. Obliged, Bilod. Deeply obliged. Mr. Tilak Kumar. Um, Mr. Uh, Filza Muniz. Yes, Ms. Muniz. On my behalf, my lords, my learned friend will argue, my lords. Yes. Okay. What do you mean on your behalf? Are you in person or? No, no, my lords, I am He's the AOR. Oh, oh, you are the AOR. Yeah. I'm advocate Sanjeevni Agarwal, my lord, representing Light Life Freedom. So, sorry, what's your name? Sanjeevni Agarwal. Sanjeevni. Oblige, my lord. Yes, Sanjeevni. My Lord, I, I will be uh, referring from the written submissions which were submitted yesterday. So it's like very brief. Are they there in whose name are they? Uh, it is in Ms. Filza Muni's name, ma'am. My Lord. Do we have it? I'll just check. One second. Sanjeevni, the Rabu Yes, sorry. I Did you find it? Yes. Five pages. Yeah, ma'am. My lord, it is. Uh, I'm, I'll start from point number two, and I'll be very brief. I understand most of the points have already been uh, discussed. So, under Article Twenty One, right to marry is a universal right, my lord, but it is not a fundamental right. And I'll take a take. I go back straight to point number six. India is a developing nation, having still fighting for the girl-child basic rights, my lord. You said point right to marry is a. Is a right, uh, my my lord. It is not a fundamental right, though it is a universal right. It is humbly submitted that, as per the Economic Survey of Ministry of Finance, sixty-five percent, as per twenty twenty-one data. India's population lives in rural area areas, and they, they don't—they are ignorant people. They don't know about what same-sex marriage is and its repercussions. It is humbly submitted, therefore, my lord, that there are still questions and challenges which we have to resolve to lay the foundation of modern societies, especially in schools, where children are not aware of what same-sex marriage is and what sexual orientation is. During a parents-teachers meeting, my lord. How would a child react to a classmate having same-sex parents? We are still paving a way as a country to provide toilets to all citizens, and therefore we have. Uh, so social acceptability, you are saying. Absolutely, point, my lord. Yes. It's very, very important point. All right, uh, fair enough. What's the next point? My lord, that's why it's it's uh, it's 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 important that we first create awareness on the subject before having a law which uh, legalize same-sex marriage. All. It is it is important that 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 Mr. Sanjeevni has already been covered. Absolutely, so, I understand. Thank you. Highly so, obliged. Thank you. Highly obliged. Uh, Mr. Gaurav Agarwal, thank you, Sanjeevni. Thank you, Pilza. Gaurav, can't get. Gaurav, Mr. Agarwal doesn't seem to be all right. Then Mr. Som Thomas. Yes, my lord. <laughs> I am party in person. I have come from. Bangalore, just for this uh, two minutes. Yes. My Lord, we have made a detailed submission. There are about seven points. I'll pick up only three quickly. Uh, first of all, marriage is a biological institution before it is a social institution. 
and Indian law is substantive in its coverage of marriage. Uh, many jurisdictions that have legalized same-sex marriage are primarily procedural, who can get married, how they can get married in the presence of whom. But Indian law is substantive and the specific point there is sexual intercourse and sexual intercourse of a specific kind. And that is why there are words like consummation, there is the word impotence, there is the sense of fulfilling a responsibility, a sexual responsibility in marriage. And if that responsibility cannot be fulfilled or will not be fulfilled, the marriage fails. And the first cause for dissolution of a marriage that is listed in the laws is taking the sexual intercourse outside of marriage. What your lordship talked about, exclusionary. But when the exclusion is violated, that becomes the first cause for breaking the marriage. So this specific type of sexual intercourse is the basis for making and breaking of marriage. This has to be recognized. And this is important as we go along. I have talked about in my submission about the burden on the state infrastructure for protecting families, basically family courts. For example, if two women friends live together in a flat, when does their relationship, their friendship become a marriage? What is the responsibility to each other in such a marriage? Two men living together, when they have disputes, can it be taken to a family court? What is the family court supposed to do with it? And if a bisexual is involved, does he or she have a right to go outside the marriage for multiple partners? Once family courts have to start dealing with all of this, they will necessarily have to start delinking this first element of marriage, sexual intercourse. They will have to kind of say, look, sexual intercourse is in the private domain and we don't want to get into it. Are there other ways we can look at it? So in that sense, the entire marriage narrative that has existed, not just from 1950, but I would say 1950 BC and before that, predicated on sexual intercourse of a specific kind will become less of sexual responsibility and more of sexual autonomy. This may work well for the petitioners, but this is not what marriage is. And my closing point on that is that there is then no cause for the government, for the state to give privilege to relationships per se that claim to be in varied colors, including bisexual multi-partner relationships. But we can give credence to the concept of a household even in Deepika Singh versus CAT, it was really the household and the protection of the children that was the concern and not relationships per se. And so even to the government, I have already written on the policy front that yes, you can have a concept of household. It doesn't have to depend on marriage or anything like that. There is a nexus between marriage and gender, which the other party denies. But there is no nexus between marriage and insurance, between marriage and gratuity necessarily. The guidelines can separate the two. In my corporate career, in the period between NAS and Kaushal, uh, my company itself allowed employees to declare a partner for insurance, and it was done. So these are doable things without getting into the area of marriage, that to the substantive aspect of marriage. The uh, other parties, primarily keen on the procedural aspect of marriage. Give us marriage, give us the recognition, just give us a procedure to get through and get the label marriage. But what's the content of marriage we are concerned about as married people? I have 33 years of marriage behind me. I am concerned that marriage should and sex should remain in the arena of responsibility, not autonomy, because marriage is not autonomy. Marriage is where you give up autonomy and you work for a common good and you work for the children. That's what I wanted to say. Thank, Thank you, my lord. Thank you, Mr. Thomas. Thank you for coming all the way from Mangalore to assist us. Deeply appreciated. Thank you. Uh,
I think we are now concluding, uh, Mr. Uh, Solicitor. Would you like to? Malathan, five. No, you know, at some point now we'll have to close. Apply closure now. My name is Sandra. I have heard a diversity of viewpoints. Yes, all right. My name all right. Thirty seconds for everyone, and then the solicitor. Not my. Malathan, I'll just take two minutes. Malathan, my name is in. Thirty seconds. Yes, tell us. You are Gaurav Gaurav. No, Malathan. All right. Malaz, recognition or declaration of bisexual or pansexual person's marriage will directly lead to bigamy and polygamy in this country, Malaz. All right. I'll, I'll explain, Malaz. No, you made your point. Don't explain no, it. No, Malaz. Because if my laws will anyway... Malaz, we, we got your point. We got your point. That's all right. We, we, we understood Malaz, the point. You don't have to... These are... Uh, we understand Malaz, the line of thinking behind. only rights of bigamy or polygamy to bisexuals or pansexuals Malaj, will also have to grant it to heterosexuals and other LGBTQ people as well. All right. All right. Thank you. What was Malaj in 501.13. Oh, what's your name? Council is appearing Malaj. online. Malaj. Malaj. What is your name? Shashank. My name is Prashant Dikshit Malaj. Prashant Dikshit. Please. Yes. So what's your name? Malos, in 501.13, council is appearing online. Malos, he wishes to make some mission for 30 seconds. Malaj. Who is appearing? Shashank, Shashank, Shekhar, Mr. Jha? Yes, sir. Yes, Mr. Jha. Yes, I, I will just make 30 seconds point. Point number one, the petitioner's finger first. Yes. Yeah, the petitioners claim that marriage is a private affair, and that is why they quoted Navtej, Puttu Swami, and etc. But the matter of the fact is that marriage is not private, it is social affair. Sexual interaction. All right, got the point. Thank you, Mr. Jha. Point Thank number you. two. Yes, I will just yes. take 30 seconds, not more than yes. 30. Point number two. Now, same-sex marriage is expected in heterosexual uh, society or system currently before the court. But I guess the law, heterosexual law, which is in, uh, currently in hold, is not competent enough to give mm -hmm. homosexual those specific rights. And that is why you need to have new laws and not the changes in this particular right. law. Thank you. Now, who is... I, my, my IN number is 91562. What's your name, sir? This is, my name is Group Captain Karan Singh Bhatti. Yes, Mr. Bhatti. And for uh, ex Servicemen Lawyers Association, I am representing. Yes, Mr. Bhatti. What only, is the point? only one issue yes. that uh, Lordship is aware why it is necessary. In Joseph Sine, the first part, original judgment, did not deal with peculiar circumstances of armed forces. But the second, then the Constitution bench had to say, Lordship may bear that my application and submissions are only oh, on that. Thank you. That it's an entirely different class, uh, and it will it will create a havoc if such a thing thank is you. to come. Thank you. I'm deeply. Well, so it's my idea number is. So I'm Anson Thomas. Uh, one second, Mr. Thomas. Let's see. Eight two six four nine. My Lord, I make only one point. The essence of family and the composition of family is unalterable. All right. Thank you. So therefore, my Lord, therefore, my Lord, in a yeah. joint family, if a grandson marries. The same sex marriage had happened, then the family composition is destroyed. All right. Thank you very much. Who, who have... Lord, I filed annexers also, my Lord. Yes, speaker. sure. Thank you. Lord, Who's speaker. next? Your Lordship, Anson my, Thomas. One second, Mr. Thomas. My IA number is 9394. What's the point you're making? Yes. And please introduce first, yourself. Yeah. First point is that uh, your name. The, the issue is. The, name? Yeah, my name is Gaurav Kumar Agarwal. Hmm. I am representing. Yes, Mr. Agarwal. Yes. Yeah. First point is that it is the issue regarding the nomenclature that they want, petitioner want the use of the term marriage, whereas we are denying this. Because All right, thank you. Se you second it. point, yes. one more point. The purpose of marriage is to have legitimate children, my Lord. All right, thank you. We've got, heard that before. Yes, thank you. Yes, my Lord. My IA number is 67242. Mm -hmm. Dr. APC. Yes. On behalf of Anita Chauhan, he is the applicant, my lad. What's the point? What's the point? My, lad, my point is same sex marriage is totally unnatural, as per call, unnatural and against the health parameter as per World Health Organization. All right, thank First you. point, my lad, second, Union of India has shown a specific section which applies only to biological men and women. All right, point, thank you. Legal recognition for same sex marriage in unlawful, illegal, because the notion of marriage itself necessarily proposes union between two persons. All right, thank you, Mr. Singh. Any, who else now? Anybody else left? My name is Dhawal Unyal. Yes, Mr. Unyal. Uh, you know, uh, only one point as we rely upon the written submissions the fundamental right of an adopted child. Parent number 10. Ms. Bhatti has argued that today in the morning. Thank you. Yes, Just only one minute. Uh, Naveen Pahava. So, justice of all, but it's only one submission that the doctrine of not reading down.
can be achieved only, my lords, without making any bend or bend in the law, without making extensive additions or deletions, etc., which is not possible in the facts of the present case. Thank you. Law Thank you. Anybody else now? We have Mr. Solicitor? Mr. Solicitor. Well, I'll take just yeah. five minutes yeah. and more, my lord. Anson, Anson so, Thomas. I was, uh, Mr. Just one second. Mr. Thomas, what do you want to say? Just give yeah. us. Uh, IA 83410, my letter to the Honorable Chief Justice on 13 March and also on 17th April, that yes, Chief, Justice point of making, India should recuse, Chief Justice of India should recuse in this particular matter. Thank you, Mr. Like Thomas. To I, take it on record. I have application rejected. I yes, would object Mr. to uh, but leave it at that, my lord. Yes. Please ignore, my lord, uh, uh, some aberrations, my lord. I yes. object, my lord, since he has made the submission, I officially object to this submission yes. being made. Lord, five minutes. Lord, during yesterday's dialogue, my lord, it, was, it fell that there is a possibility of a declaration being made, something less than marriage, but something more than the present status. Lord, having examined that, my lord, why, my lord, that may not be a correct course of action, my lord. Lord, your lordship's declaration would be a law within the meaning of Article 141, binding all, not just all courts, binding the whole nation. The difficulty would be this, Lord. Any declaration of law would bind every individual in the country who is not before your lordships. In case of a law, every individual is represented by his chosen representative. That is the first issue. Your lordships are aware about the judgment in that baker's case, where my lord, one baker refused to bake a cake in a same-sex marriage, and my lord, he was prosecuted, etc. Similar thing happened, my lord. After the judgment of the American Supreme Court, my lord, five versus four, one pester refused to perform the ceremony of marriage. And he was sought to be prosecuted and they have to come out with a law, what is called, my lord, the Pester Protection Act. Now examine, my lord, a situation where your lordship declares the law. Your lordships would obviously not be declaring the contours of the declaration the regulatory powers, what will be the regulation, who will be bound, who will not be bound. Suppose someone goes to a priest for performing a particular ritual and priest says that as per my religion, it is only the husband and wife who can sit, a man and a woman who can sit in performance of that ritual, I will not be a party to it. So I am posing a question to myself, would he not be guilty of contempt of your lordship's declaration? Lord, what would be the position, my Lord, in case of, say, visa? My Lord, where a wife gets the entitlement to visa, but only... See, that's a matter of that priest's fundamental right to follow his conscience and faith. Lord, 
where that conscience stops See, and where his duty where, ends or where, begins. So that's where solicitor, what is the kind of form, content and contours of the declaration is important. Correct. We are all presuming yes, that the declaration will be in the form of a writ that grant this or grant that. This is what we are accustomed to. What I was hinting was, as a constitutional court, we recognize only a state of affairs and draw the limit to there and say... I am grateful, my lord. My worry was this. Whenever, my lord, a declaration is made either by legislature or by the court, legislature has the wherewithal to regulate the fallout. Your lordship would not be able to, first of all, foresee, envisage, comprehend, and thereafter deal with the fallout of that declaration. Fallout can be manifold in various facets of life. In you various, you know, the... saying that any declaration of this court will really, in that sense, yes. apply to everyone individual in the nation and preempt the legislature from considering. No, 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 no. I am slightly on a different point. It may not even preempt the legislature. Legislature can still do something, but that would be, my lord. And for that, my lord, I would, my lord, one paragraph I am tempted to read from. Lord, uh, this uh, Obersfell judgment, my lord. We, that's okay. We, we no, uh, only one para, my lord, for my satisfaction. Tell us the para number, that's all. No, that's I, I, I would wish, my lord, your lordship, it, it's, it won't take more than two minutes. It's 2463. 2463, volume four of the petitioner's compilation, for my satisfaction. Please have a look. And this angle, my lord, is missed by all of us. And we also, my lord, feel that there would be some disservice, as Chief Justice Roberts points out, Lord, to the petitioners. And therefore, Lord, I wish to read it. Lord, kindly have a look at 2463. Just I'll just read. Lord. When decisions are reached through de democratic means, some people will inevitably be disappointed with the result. But those whose views do not prevail at least know that they had their say and accordingly are, in the tradition of our political culture, reconciled to the result of a fair and honest debate. In addition, they can gear up to raise the issue later hoping to persuade enough on the winning side to think again. That is exactly how our system of governance is supposed to be. But today, the court puts a stop to all that. Well, this is what, in my submission, the declaration would mean. But today, the court puts a stop to all that. By deciding this question under the Constitution, the so, court removes it. It's very important that you read that. What is put out there is, yes. the Chief Justice is uh, highlighting that the declaration that they have a right to marry. What was that? Justice Kennedy declared that gay couples have a right to marry. Correct, my lords. Now, we are intensely aware of that. We are intensely aware of that. I am grateful, my lord. Kindly, my lord, something further, which is on a slightly different point. Therefore, I would like to read it fully, my lord. There will be consequences to shutting down the political process on an issue of such profound public significance. Closing debate tends to close minds. People denied a voice are less likely to accept the ruling of a court on an issue that does not seem to be the sort of thing courts usually decide. As a thoughtful commentator observed about another issue, the political process was moving not swiftly enough for advocates of quick, complete change, but majoritarian institutions were listening to and acting. Kindly avoid, my lord, the citation part. This is crucial and this is another dimension which Chief Justice Robert gives, my lord. Indeed, however, please note this. Indeed, however, heartened the proponents of same-sex marriage might be on this day, it is worth acknowledging what they have lost. From their point of view, the court says, indeed, however, heartened the proponents of same-sex marriage might be on this day, it is worth acknowledging that they have lost and lost Thank forever. You. The opportunity to win the true acceptance that comes from persuading their fellow citizens of the justice of their cause. And they lose this just when the winds of change were freshening at their backs. Thank you, Mr. Solicitor. My Lord, only last, my Lord, it's my duty, my Lord, therefore I'm pointing out. My Lord, at the outset I said that we have written letters to the state governments. Lord, there are seven responses, I'm not reading them, from Manipur, Andhra Pradesh, Uttar Pradesh, Maharashtra, Assam, Sikkim and Rajasthan. I'm placing them on record. 
Rajasthan takes the position that we have examined it and we are op opposed to the position that the petitioners are taking. All rest say that this needs a very intense and expansive debate and we would not be able to respond immediately. Malot, we have received this. I will file it on in the, in the registry with copies to the other side. Malot, sir. So Malot, these are my uh, closing submissions, but yes. I'm just putting it on record. Malot. Uh, I'm not reading them. They are one and a half page closing submissions. Malot, I'll place it on record. Yes, Dr. Singhvi. Lordships don't mind, my lord. I know it's a little unusual, Lord. Uh, my colleague has, amongst all, worked it, my lord, to the best. If he can be given, my lord, some time, my lord, few minutes, my lord. My Mr. Well, Agarwal. After you have concluded, thank you. Yes, Mr. All right. Singh. May it please you, my lords. Now, my lords, your lordships has heard us very patiently. I've either been present or been made aware, my lords. So, lordship may take it. I know, my lords, the broad trends of the argument, and I'll answer them one by one from mere cohabitation to a mere, I use the word mere, Malas, declaration of same-sex marriage to a further declaration of same-sex marriage valid under SMA, which is what I'm asking. There's a difference between my two and three, Malas. Same-sex marriage valid under and through SMA. From that, this whole Malaz, excessive to the point of being Malaz, actually wrong emphasis on legislative intent. Go to, put in five different ways. Malaz. Go to the legislature, original intent, rewriting, judicial legislation, judicial surgery. I'll be dealing with all Malaz. I'm just saying, Lashay, I'm cognizant of all that. Then to the, Malaz, what I call, we call Malaz, the scare argument. Oh, my lords, how will it work? The workability argument. It's, a, it's an attempt well, to create. I'll be dealing specifically with the workability argument. And then finally, to the notice and objections. Now, well, I will be very pointed. It may not happen in the sequence my Lord Wallace well, would want it, but I'll be covering all this. But my arguments are broadly under three heads. And your Lordship members kindly consider following those three heads because they will come. Sometimes your Lordship's query may relate to the third head. Lordship, rest assured, it will come there. Well, the first head, with great respect, Willis, is that a constitution compliant reading. We didn't respond to this, Your Lordship said we'll not go into this. Notice and etc. No, no, my Lord did not give a judgment, Willis. Your Lordship no, no, made an observation. We're not going into it in, in these well, with respect. Did say, therefore, we, we didn't. I, as I recall, when the no. arguments were being heard, I, yes, I argued it fully in the opening. We said that this is common to, this is not specific to the uh, same so sex. also. And therefore, we said we will not really deal with it in this batch. We have petitions which are pending. That's what your lordship said. Second, keep in mind, I have petitions. But, but may I just say? That's what I, 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 your lordship's time. I argued, I argued it fully in the opening. But Dr. Singh, we uh, keep it aside because we haven't heard them. Otherwise, we would have pointed out to them that they have missed out on. Uh, that is, well, uh, according to us. Purposefully, we did that. That is, well, if your lordship has to hear them briefly on that tomorrow. Well, that is the heart, no, no, the no, heart no, of our objections. No, one second, Dr. Singhvi. We have petitions which are pending specifically on this challenge. And the reason why we thought we will not deal with it in this batch of matters is that that's a matter which is common to both heterosexual couples as well as to... Well, I was addressing that argument. Your lordship's, lordship's, yes. just, just one minute, Mr. Matthews. I'm sorry. Well, it's your lordship's observed when the... I argued it fully in the opening. Your lordship said just, just, that because it is common... I said, well, just one second. I said that merely because it is common to another segment. If you don't mind. I'm sorry. Inherently unfair to the learned solicitor and no, all those who followed on this side 
that they went by our telling them that we are not no, going to can go. I, can I just clarify? I, I, I hear a lot of... with the subject wise and we consciously decided that they are not... And in a sense, you know, our, in a sense, our suggestion Therefore, really led them to a sense of... Therefore, because Malus, of the no, 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 I am Malus, with it. I, far be it from me to take away any natural justice from anywhere, Malus, that's not the point. Give me just two minutes. I raised it, argued it fully. In the course of arguments, Malus, your lordship observed, at which time only Mr. Uh, Ramchandra was there, Mr. Grover was there. They protested that this is the heart of our claim. The lordship said, we'll take a call later. Now, Malus, if procedure is violated, your lordship certainly will hear them briefly tomorrow. But according to us, the heart, but I'll take only Malus, a very short while on that. I've argued it fully in the opening. Your lordship's Malus, point was that if heterosexual couples to whom this regime equally applies are not present before us, should we not take it separately? That was a short point made, Malus. I have dealt with it fully in my written submissions. Because your Lordship's Dr. test Singh, is a positive test. See, Dr. Singh, just answer this. Yes. We were not here when the reference was made. There is no reference order per se. So the order was implicit on this premise that the claim for same-sex marriage was being considered. The court, to be fair to the court, nobody pointed out these nitty-gritties of the claims the details of these claims or even yes. section 7 SMA. Therefore, to stand up and say we have been heard and please insist that insisting that we must be heard and we must you must have a ruling is not up to you. No, no, because no. see, Everything orders do not reflect. That side, is there is, there is a consensus. The consensus was that let the same sex marriage claim be heard. Well, can I just say? Your Lordship will recollect, I argued almost for half an hour on this issue. You in the did, open. you did. Then, Malas, no after doubt, that, but then, but I, 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 ultimately, the only issue is the Lordship has not heard them. Your Lordship may hear them briefly because, Malas, your Lordship's <laughs> test is, give me a minute. My Lord, the Chief Justice's observation, I just want to take two minutes on that. Your Lordship's test is that is an identifiable class genuinely aggrieved with locus before me. If a genuinely aggrieved, identifiable class like me, which is directly aggrieved by that is before your, your lordships, then your lordship will not not hear me on the basis that another class also is not before your lordships. The only issue of heterosexual couples we are not concerned with, Malas. We are saying that the notice and objections regime, well, ultimately it boils down to... Look at it this way. One, time, one second. Time. There's another problem. Yes. Your argument in the challenge to the notice provision yes. postulates a verdict in your favor that there is a right to marry under the Special Marriage Act. Of course. All right. Now, therefore, the question as to whether otherwise the notice provision doesn't apply to same-sex couples at all. Right. But, therefore, but at the, the highest and taking your argument at its highest, correct, correct. this will your challenge to Section 7 and 10 has to be deferred. To a point when we have ruled on the legality I, I, of the claim Lord to a same-sex well, marriage. Can I say why that might not be correct? Just give me a second. Well, it's your lordship will the first step have to see whether I am same-sex marriage recognized under SMA. That was my lord's observation. That gives me access to marriage under a secular agnostic statute called SMA. It does not give me equality also, with my... Dr. Singhvi, you have to argue on a demurrer. Yes. You have to say that even assuming that yes. you are not correct. with me correct. Correct. on the same-sex marriage issue, yes. even correct. then my challenge to Section 7 and 10 will survive. Can you say that? No, but that I am not arguing, Malas. I am arguing on the basis of both. I am arguing cumulatively. I am entitled to say... But you would have Malas... heard you in your petition no, no, on Section say, 7 and 10 if you were right in saying that even if you hold against me on the first point, my second point will survive. May I put it like Your this? second point yes. is really dependent on the view which Malas, you take I on the bow down. Point. I bow down. And therefore, at the highest, what we can do is this. The two are inextricably intertwined. At, at the highest, what we could do is this. Assuming, because we are now testing the hypothesis, yes. assuming that we give a declaration as that you want, that you are entitled to a right to marry under the Special Marriage Act, that there is a right to marry, so on and so forth, we can say that this particular issue will be dealt with separately in a petition which you will file or in the pending petitions where you may have intervened. The pending or, petitions are there on this specifically. Mine, Mr. Raju Ram Chandra's, others, others, all directly, already pending here. And they were mentioned, they were added. Because to notice, system. notice applies to those who are entitled to marry undoubtedly, because that's why a heterosexual couple, they, 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 there's a square challenge. But, but on we this, can't hear your challenge unless we, unless we rule on your basic point. Well, I, get, I leave it to a lot of with two points. Singh, we, we might be putting the cart before the horse. Well, that may, sense of the... May I, may I just say this? That's I'll leave it at that. I, let me state my point and I'll leave it. Because my point is, number one, your lordships yeah. would decide certainly the declaratory part under SMA. Number two, 
my point is when I bow down, my second point of notice and objection arises only if your lordship holds me eligible under SMA, no doubt. However, I say that if your lordship so holds in the first part, the other is inextricably intertwined. It follows, it's consequential. Without that, much of my right is hollow. And thirdly, Malitz, the ultimate objection to this is what? I mean, we are in the Supreme Court. Your Lordship will hear another combination. But the only objection is that he has not argued. Your Lordship will give him a fixed time, half a day, and we'll finish it off tomorrow, Malitz. I have already argued. We will take less than 50. At the end of the day, your Lordship is rightly concerned about natural justice. And I'm not suggesting your Lordship violates that, Malitz. That's well, the only way to put it, well, otherwise I, I leave it to my Lord. Well, it's a very, very, I will show well, at the end 10 minutes why, well, the assuming your Lordships were to give me a declaration that I am a same-sex valid marriage under SMA, the vulnerability, the practical operation, the invitation to violence will make that right 50 to 70 percent illusory. That's the reason, well, your Lordship completes the, obviously well, if your Lordship doesn't hold me to the first part, there's no point, your Lordship doesn't have to bother. What will, well, at the end of the day, what is the objection? He didn't get a chance to argue. According to our understanding, I was not here. My learned friend tell me, Lordship said, we'll see later. The Lordship did not exclude the point. For a particular reason, which will not... Did not exclude the point. Therefore, Mullahs, yeah. I suggest, at least let me finish my argument on that, whatever little argument I have. The Lordship and Mullahs accommodate him in... It's a very short point. He can, Mullahs, right. show those sections that then a Lordship may have a little bit of spillover. With due respect, uh, Dr. Dr. Singh, with due Dr. respect... Dr. Sorry. Yes. 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 Sorry. Please call. Yes, yes. Please call. Yes. Dr. Singh, we see what is being suggested to you is let the bench rule on the principal aspect. Are you entitled to the declaration of a marriage or not? You are talking about the right post that being in illusionary in some manner because of consequences which may flow. It's not that you are being shut out of that right to argue that. I appreciate it. I appreciate the thing it. is that it is being felt that since it's an interlinked issue both for uh, the same-sex marriage as well as a heterosexual marriage, it may be more appropriate to hear that out in a particular manner looking to both sex of the people. I don't think that should uh, uh, trouble you so much. I cannot say more than that. I will leave you know, it at that. There are only two things which can happen. One is you get a declaration, in which case you are heard on the second aspect. Second is you don't get a declaration, then really you can't argue that. Well, so it's, uh, it's I, I, I appreciate what my Lord is saying. I bow down to it. I will not say more. I made my three points. Whether your Lordship then Malus, still would want to hear it in a subsequent hearing, that's your Lordship's Malus, prerogative. But Malus, I would still say the Lordship may consider seriously my three submissions. That's why your Lordship should hear it in this bench. But I, I don't want to, Malus, I want to move Now, on the I, main I, matter, I, you I said you had three points, basically. Three heads. Third was this, Malus. Third was this. Right. What is so the, first? the first is, Malus, uh, that a constitution-compliant reading of the Special Marriage Act is within don't give it back is within the bounds of legitimate statutory interpretation that's the first head here are the heads fellas it is neither judicial surgery nor judicial legislation There are seven, eight major points under this. I will itemize them and go one by one under them. My second major head, Malus, is to Malus assure your lordships and assuage all the needless apprehensions created to show to your lordships, Malus, that the relief I seek in one sentence, Malus, I am a valid, recognizable same-sex marriage under SMA. That's the proposition. I am, my second head of submission is that the relief I seek is workable. So the workability head. And neither requires and neither requires this honorable court to create any new social institution. Any of these are phrases picked up from the respondents. Institution. Nor to have a new definition of marriage. Nor to have a new definition of marriage. These are all again phrases by the respondents. Your Lordship will be creating a new definition of marriage. Your Lordship will be creating a new social institution. 
nor thirdly nor entering into any thicket of personal law or other related laws my third set of head you should note it you should decide whether to hear me now or later just note the head balance i mean this is a sure uh, that balance the prayer for striking down the notice and objection regime of the sma the prayer for striking down the notice and objection regime of the sma keep it here is an essential and indivisible component essential and indivisible component of my prayer for marriage equality my whole case about marriage equality this is an essential and indivisible component of that prayer for marriage equality your lordships without this third head would have granted a recognition of same sex marriage but not equality it would be a recognition of same sex without equality we are seeking two things well as marriage equality your lordship would in some sense grant marriage but not equality without this third that's why it's important and as well as for rightly says well as without recognizing the extreme vulnerability of the class which faces this notice and objection regime well as much of the relief might be made illusory it's a very very clear strong special vulnerability i will stick to these three heads well i'll start with the first amar is all these are points under the first item of board
So, well, let's just two sentences on what is the heart of my claim and prayer, and then we come to the first head straight away. Well, as, as I've said, we not only seek or we do not merely seek a declaration of the right to marry, which is one way of putting it. Of course, the solicitor opposes even that. One particular class of respondents said, yes, you may give that, but not go further. We do not seek bullets merely a declaration of their right to marry, but a right to marry under the SMA by an interpretation of the SMA, which would allow for solemnization and or registration of non-heterosexual marriages. That's the heart and the complete case. Therefore, Malaz, what we seek is a right to access on equal terms. We are seeking a right to access this social institution called marriage and on equal terms. The irony is by learned friends, except that it's a very sanctified social institution. People must have access, but they say not you True. and not on equal terms. True law. So, Malus, in a nutshell, this case is about interpretation to apply an existing law in a non-discriminatory fashion. There is no judicial legislation, no judicial surgery. Your lordships, fellows, have done much, much, much more. Interpretation of an existing law, no new lawmaking, but in a non-discriminatory fashion, which has two components. A, I should have a right to access on non-discriminatory terms. B, on equal terms. Now I come to my first head, straight away, Miss. First head. Well, is the heart of this matter is what? Your Lordship, is all, I'll deal with this, this bogey of excessive reliance on the legislature. I'll, I'll be dealing with this constant argument. Well, is the Constitution, just to digress for 30 seconds, the Constitution is supreme. Because your lordships, fellas, interpret entrenched rights in a counter majoritarian manner against the majorities. Every day, your lordship, fellas, the whole constitution is about interpreting and applying entrenched rights against the majorities, against elected legislatures, against electoral majorities, which your lordships from the framers' time thought could become tyrannical and dictatorial. So why there be no constitution? This constant hearkening that you are the judges, unelected judges who enforce entrenched constitutional rights against elected legislatures because our constitutional forefathers said that many rights were entrenching precisely because they have to be a counter-majoritarian against the elected legislature. What is so great about a legislature, Willis? Willis, kindly go one by one, Willis. Therefore, Malus, consequently, except very small, very, very small detail, yes. Yes. That the legislature is the one which has created this SMA. Yes. If you rewind the, and there were no SMA, yes. where would that right flow? Well, it's very simple. Let us be very candid, we, we We cannot keep fictions anymore. The legislature made the constitution, but it made the constitution supreme and a special majority to amend it. In other countries, that is enough. To say the constitution is supreme, not the legislature, not the judiciary, not the executive. Here your lordship put a supra added basic structure on it. And who says what is basic that structure? Is, your lordship say that. All that is fine. We, we rewind to the position that existed before 1954. Yes. Where could an interfaith couple come and assert that right? That is where exactly you stand today. Now, well, it's, it's a very good, interesting ear your lordship is giving. I have in my written submission even put a photograph. That's very interesting here my Lord Jesus Bhatt is giving. Well, this Brown versus Board happened around that time. There were people who wrote that we are, these are the documents of the framers of the 14th Amendment 
who said you can never have equal but segregated. The original intent was against. They said we will now interpret it in accordance with evolving times. And the photo I put in my submissions, Willis, is an iconic photograph of 1960 with four white marshals escorting a black guard. Purely counter majoritarian. The 14th Amendment, Travo Preparatoire, suggested that the original intent was not to allow this uh, desegregation. And the judgment records it. It's a judgment not in the compilations. And a 9 0 judgment in 54 as Justice well as, uh, 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 Justice well as, at that time, we are now well as, what, 75 years down the line. Because it is well as, evolving. Well, as I have got two other interesting examples when I do some research to this case. I'm digressing with a very interesting example. I should be shocked to know. Well as, there were laws passed by legislatures of USA, the country which is the most advanced country in the world. One law said that male people below an IQ of X must Eugenics. be sterilized. Eugenics. Eugenics. Because, no, because you should not have a society of idiots. I, I'm being blunt, brother. That's virtually what judgment says. That's the that judgment was upheld. Correct. I'm sorry, no, the, the, the law was upheld. Justice Holmes. 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 Second example. Second example is very, very interesting and very relevant for today. Well, as the biggest change from my time when I joined the profession is well, among other things that from being a refuge of last resort, law is an option of first choice. You would do well as you would fail five exams and then come to law. Now well as it's an option of first choice. Secondly, people with no background in law are coming to law. With no correction, fathers, grandfathers are coming to law. Third greatest advance is women. The number of women when some of us started our profession and now is radically different. Well as the second law passed in USA was the women should be barred from joining the legal profession because of the roughness of the profession. Women are not suited. Also upheld. We were the first well, to we do away with that. that. We, I beg yeah. we were the first to do away with that. That is much more advanced. Uh, now, Marits, these are, therefore, this whole concept, original intent, legislature, it is, unele it is unelected judges who are the masters of interpretation of the Supreme Court, uh, of the Constitution. The whole idea is to entrust that power to a class of people who are not buffeted by the majoritarian trends or the majoritarian ethos of a time which can at times be tyrannical and dictatorial. Well, part three is nothing but a counter-majoritarian part three. What is part three? It's an entrenchment against the majority. Articles 25, 26, 27, 29, 30, nothing but counter-majoritarian. So it's no point repeating. Yes, if your lordship finds that the Ghedan, which is completely mis-test, I am asking 10 units ahead of Ghedan. Then it might be judicial legislature, I should not do it. But don't not do it because the legislature may do it. That's not a valid reason. If your lordships find that your lordship has to do much more than even Ghedan allows, then your lordships may not do it. If your lordship finds that this is not a correct thing to do, your lordship may not do it. But please don't well as be swayed by this constant, constant majoritarian argument. Elected legislature, unelected judges, majorities. But the whole advance of law is replete with well, examples to the contrary. There would be no advance in the law. Well, and we are now talking about Brown versus Board of 1954-55. Well, well, you just said that if you feel that it's not a correct thing to do, then don't do it. Or in other words, if you feel that it is a correct thing to do it, then by all means do it. No, the problem even, is that even there within limits. Well, the problem is that the court decide these issues of correctness or otherwise when they are essentially issues of legislative policy no, and in the legislative. Well, your lordship knows it better than us. Your lordship has done much, much, much more That's in the exactly course of interpretation. The judge decide. Does the judge decide that this is correct and therefore we will do it? Yeah. Or is this something which? Properly well, so called is for the legislature your, to decide well, whether it is correct. I would even go so far as to say that there is a value judgment involved in all these cases. Was Navtej not a value judgment, Malas? Nav Why is Navtej not a value judgment, Malas? No, Navtej Nav 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 was, the court was within its constitutional bounds. Because right. it was a challenge because to the validity of challenge. Uh, it's a challenge, Malas, by reading down that Article 14 and 15 is excludes me on ascriptive characteristics. That's the one sentence summary of this case. Your lordship is preventing discrimination which is practiced by the application of discrimination against me 
on ascriptive characteristics so directly for the for let's place let's understand your submission yes. your argument is that any notion of marriage yes as a social institution which excludes same sex couples would be violative of constitutional precept All right. In particular, fourteen, fifteen, etc. That's right. In particular, their argument is that marriage is conventionally understood. Correct. Is a heterosexual union between man and woman. Correct. You are saying now, in order to make it constitutionally compliant, read that social institution as also comprehending within its fold lordship, please, the union between a same-sex couple. Because no, not only that. One sentence more. That's very different from what we did in Navtej. No, no, well, Navtej. I'm saying well, no, no, with on one ground. One of the grounds of an ascriptive characteristic. One of the Have grounds. Started of... the uh, the debate by saying that this uh, special I mean, marriage act provisions are void. You have not. Difficult. You have said that it is. Well, it's raised in if I can manner, kindly if you read it literally, I, I, it leads to this. Well, kindly see what my Lord just cut us for. Then after you brought in all no, this, well, kind of kindly, of kindly just see what my. It, let me answer. Just give me a minute. It's very important. Kindly see what my Lord just just formulated. Therefore, I could enter the gate with a voidness challenge as a SMA. Yes, you could. Yes, well, can I not ask for lesser? Your Lord, well, read down. Point. Your Lord, question of lesser. Well, it's kindly. Question is, you should be able to say this is a wrong classification. I'm taking it head on, strike it down. No, well, it's with and respect. With respect. With respect. With respect. The striking down would be on the same articles. See, this is a very artful way of putting it, if I may say so. This is very artful. You are not taking it head on. You are saying that there is a classification which is illegitimate. Yes. But you are not willing to take it that far because Now, you have no locus. Can I? Can I? Well, no, you have no locus. I don't well, with great respect. No locus may not be right. Give it. You are establishing. You wanting to me. establish a right. By, 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 by opposing a negative that this is why. So let me meet both those points. It's very important part of the debate. Number one, I am entitled to challenge it on the ground of discrimination and an arbitrary exclusion, but the consequence, my lord, is saying must be struck down. Malice, if your lordship within the bounds of judicial review, if forget this case, are able to read down something, does your lordship not hundred times uphold the act? By reading down, forget this case. What else? What else should we do? Is the technique wrong? Yeah. The technique is not opposition one. If I may yeah. say yeah. so, is the classification there is valid. Now you want to push it forward and say it is a valid classification, but no, I'm not saying it's valid classification. I'm not saying valid classification. I'm Then sorry. In that case, heterosexual classification is not valid according respect, to you. No, your classification which is invalid becomes valid by your lordship's reading spouse person <laughs> everywhere. It can become valid, but the lordship does it in every law. But Dr. Singhvi, there was no argument of it being ever invalid. The argument was, we need the same benefits as are flowing to those who are in a. Otherwise, it, otherwise it would be bad. Otherwise, the law would be bad. No, but you, you never laid a challenge to the very statute. No, Malus, I am saying I am entitled not to raise. Yes, we understand. No, Malus, I, let me. Well, I am asking. Forget this case for a minute. As a proposition of law, my lord should not think that there is any slate of hand. As a just for a minute, forget this case. As a proposition of law, am I entitled to come to your lordship's court and say, A, I have direct locus. I am directly agreed because I am that class which is excluded. So there is no question of lack of locus. I am that class excluded. Second question, I am the class excluded because the exclusion occurs on ascriptive characteristic. Of gender or sex or identity. Third, if your lordship finds that there is an exclusion, then while normally the law would be struck down, I am giving you clear, simplest, minimalist answers as to why a reading of person and well as uh, same sex or spouse will validate the law. I don't want change any other part of the law. Dr. Singh, why am I compelled, Malak, to challenge its validity? Even if you were to challenge the constitutional validity of the yes. Special Marriage Act, yes. even if you were to challenge yes. the constitutional yes. validity of the Special Marriage Act, that would be postulated on the hypothesis that any statutory recognition of marriage yes. as being confined to a heterosexual man and woman is unconstitutional. In other words. What you would then see is an expansion by the court of the very notion of marriage, so as to include a class of relationships other than a heterosexual, heterosexual relationship. Absolutely, 
right absolutely that exactly is the problem because then what happens is that the court in the course of reading down yes. which you are then suggesting that yes. it should be done would be reading down the statute in a manner which would expand the dimension no, of the is, social call it reading up. which is what you see no no call it reading up i have no problem with that semantics call it reading up reading up reading up is what you are then going to say is that look the special marriage act yes. has taken notion taken account of marriage being a notion involving a man and a woman yes this is unconstitutional yes in other words actually if you stretch it further sure. that any notion of any any notion of marriage itself being a, a a union between a heterosexual man and a woman is itself unconstitutional now let's can i can i just answer that now can we can we i mean so, can, so we, I, can we go down that far and say that look the very social institution of marriage yeah. as including a relationship only between a man and woman is unconstitutional even you won't take it that far no malus we are saying in the event that you are the social custom no malus we are saying that it's amenable to article 13 malus i'm sorry we are you haven't also taken it that far and you won't take it that far we are saying so what is your next line of argument that by recognizing marriage only in terms of a relationship between a man and woman the legislature has infringed 15 or 14 or 20 all that we are saying is that if you continue to read sma to exclude same sex couples then the sma as a legal proposition is unconstitutional under 14 19 15 and 21 just allow me brother i have heard it also loud and clear first point marriage as a legal institution needs my access on equal terms as heterosexual couples my stoppage of access and also not on equal terms is my violation of 14 and 15 doesn't stop here Your Lordship, next question is: Everything different is not unconstitutional. Let us see what is the difference based on. That's question number two in an Article 14 analysis. My answer to question number two would be that this differentiation, which leads to the exclusion of same-sex couples, is based solely on ascriptive characteristics. Solely. Question number three: If it is so, then normally. its exclusion must be struck struck down but kindly bear with me i'm answering your question the exclusion must be struck down now that may lead to balus situations of inclusion inclusion So this part we have understood your submission. What is yes. the what's the so next? First, that uh, analysis then stop at three. So first is, is there a differentiation exclusion? If there is, is there a valid basis for it? These two I've made bonus. Third still remains. Overall, is it something which your lordship should not do after the first two? Reading up or reading down, because of a original intent prohibition. Answer clearly has to be no. Your lordship never followed original intent in that sense in this country. Four. Okay, Singhvi. During the hearing on behalf of the petitioners, I think we had trodden all this ground and even moved on. And if I rec recollect rightly, you said that you would not urge any interpretation which does violence to the other provisions of the statute. That's the workability. That's where you ended it, and the others took over. 
So now, please focus on what is your that's core the workability argument. part. I'm just coming, Malus. That's the workability part. I will be showing your lordships chapter and verse the workability because that is told to your lordships today, Malus. I'm only on this on the first part: a mere declaration of marriage or a declaration of a valid recognized marriage under SMA. That's the debate to the first head. I've not come to the second head yet, Malus. In the first head, it is our case that your lordships must recognize same-sex marriage on these legal basis under the SMA. And for that, your lordship has ultimately in the fourth test or the third test only to see that does an original intent bind you? There is no such doctrine in India. Is there overall a policy of the law? The language is, it is permissible for a court to depart from the specific intent of the legislators as long as the, as the proposed interpretation is consistent with the underlying thrust of the statute and within the institutional competence of the judiciary. If your lordship is violating this test, by all means, I'm out of the first test. Well, it's, this is I have a quote from Gedan I've just read, just part. Well, uh, Gedan was much misrepresented, factually different, contextually different. I started when I philosophy requires my arguments, of course it is. I cited it for the interpretive doctrine of judges not being bound by sterile doctrines of the original intent or the specific intention of the legislators. That is the we only reason I said to. We don't need to go to Gaidan. We have our own homegrown exactly. uh, Ratan Arya and. And your lordships have, in fact, said. traveled much more than an English case without the constitutional dynamics of this country. So, Malas, your lordships reading up and reading down in a much bigger way is commonplace. Your lordships, Malas, in particular, apropos what my lord just has said in S.G. Chaudhary, which is, Malas, in footnote 1. And one more judgment, Lakshmi video. They're all in my original compilation. The Lord Shiva knows S.J. Chaudhary is as in my compilation, volume 2, at page 7094. And Lakshmi video is in my compilation 4, volume 2, at page 4510. Held this simple proposition, Malus, which is sufficient. Application of a statute ought not to be forever circumscribed by the range of concrete circumstances that its framers intended it to apply to. This is your Lordship Malas, 60s doctrine. I, I, Gedan was one Malas. I mean, I've given you Lordship enough in Indian law before that. Therefore, Malas, I submit. There's an old one on 14. I think it's Jialal. Hold on. Jialal is, I think, Wait, the it. one where those living on the other side of the Yamuna were not allowed to hold an arms license. Ah. And that, that, that rule was, uh, you know, created during the aftermath of the mutiny. I think oh, yes. 61 or 62. Oh, yes. So the court said that, how, what is this classification? See, that which was valid. Because the insurgents uh, were holding arms, they were in con they were concentrating in Meerut and that, that side. Correct, correct. So they wanted to stop that. So, so that was a contextual right. thing of that time. Correct. So then, that's right. Then, Malaz, I go on on this to say that your lordship will then juxtapose it with the agnostic thrust of the SMA. Why was the SMA created? Well, as today, after 70 years of the Republic, 75 years, we have a recognition that the numbers of same-sex or queer people is very large. They were always there, but they were not understood and recognized as a community, that they existed. There was fear on both sides, both on the heterosexual side and on the homosexual side. There was inhibition. Today, what is this case about, Malas? that your lordship provided a secular agnostic platform for heterosexuals. Forget Malus, this category. SMA's entire birth from two things, Malus, the long title and the SOR. I'm not showing it again, a lordship. And Malus, the text, especially four, section four. The whole purpose. Therefore, Malitz, the if the heteros, if the SMA was designed to facilitate marriages, well, actually, SMA was in that sense not as much, I would say, but a very significant advance. Not so much as recognizing same sex today, but a very significant advance because it was also dealing with marriages outside the pale of social acceptability. 
one of social acceptability is the heart of sma your lot is wanted to create a platform for social accept acceptability to not there for heterosexual couples now just a little uh, look at the clock dr yeah. singhvi we don't want to keep it parted beyond the vacation no no tomorrow so a little bit i will not we have about we'll about about 50 minutes we'll rise at about 4:15 so between uh, all of you please ration the time now no tomorrow will give me some time will i you know should we do one thing rise at 4 o'clock give me about half an hour 45 minutes tomorrow we'll finish with this side sorry then i want Workability, workability. You know, but this is a matter of last. Rejoinder is the last stage, brothers. We want that time, brothers. I think we tomorrow is a is a clouded morning. We have a, a reference. reference. The reference. Then we have uh, two constitution bench judgments which we are pronouncing tomorrow. Uh, plus today we had only two hundred and forty mentionings in the morning. Well, as your lordship may slash two seventy six. Sorry, two seventy. Your lordship may put the mentionings to next week, brothers, in a lighter vein, because well, this can finish too. And so then we have all thing. India. This is our last slot, brothers, in a rejoinder. Singh, you can this. It's the last one. One after another, tell us the because we have heard it for such a long no. time. No, brothers, we, this, this will be faster to grasp it. You just formulate it and then tell. No, brothers, I'm 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 formulating as I go along, brothers. I mean, I'm I'm giving your lordship every discrete point. I'm not repeating a point, but brothers, this is a matter of some moment. Your lordship will give me some time tomorrow. I'll be very pointed. And well, as the uh, lordship has time uh, from twelve o'clock for this matter, or from uh, whenever the lordship finishes yes, the other things. Only ten minutes, minutes to give a suggestion. Tell me, I'll tell you how good the practicality is. Yes, the reference will go on for. And this is. what we could do is this because tomorrow's schedule really i mean i must share it with you we have the reference which we anticipate would be 10:30 to 11 uh maybe it's perhaps a little longer uh, then we have two constitution benches give 20 minutes for that uh mentioning half an hour so we would be able to as well about 12 o'clock 12 12 12 o'clock so 12 to 1 then everybody will have to wrap up between 12 and 1 we'll finish it by 1 hour but sir i i just want Five minutes now, brother. Another five minutes after, Mr. Rodgi. Only I want to give a suggestion. I want to give a suggestion. Thank you, Lord. 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 Then we can give five minutes each to Mr. Rodgi and Mr. Ram Ramchandran, and then he wants two else to main. Let me let me one hour in one hour. Yes, three thirty. Well, let me let me proceed as fast as I can. If I need five ten minutes, should we give me twenty minutes? Because no, no, no. Oh, Mr. Anand, please keep going. Please. You are the guy, friend. My take time tomorrow. Give me and Ramchandran five five ten ten minutes now, and he can continue tomorrow. Anyway, we will be not just give. We now we are in the thick and the flow yes. of Mr. Doctor. Now well, so then, let, let me well, let, let me utilize this time at least, well, I mean, let me just go. All yes. right, Doctor. Now, now yes. I'll go. So well, I, I, now well, therefore your lordships provided a platform of so beyond social acceptability for heterosexual couples. All that your lordship has to see whether reading in or reading up within that social acceptability platform is beyond the pale of judicial review. That's the only test. That's the point. I am not asking your lordships. I heavily disagree about judicial What surgery. What you are saying is Gaidan, yes, methodology and no, not Gaidan, but is, principle. Okay, whatever principle. it may be, yes, is equally permissible under the constitution. Now, well, let's kindly turn to para nine of my note, my written submission. I made a self-contained, uh, well, as the rejoinder, rejoinder right? justice uh, in rejoinder. Yes, what right. is it called? Haina. It's got my name on the top of the rejoinder submissions by so and so. अभी अभी आया है दोपहर को सुनो अब इसमें
there is a mail is it mail me volume volume up to volume 18 huh? chetan pen drive me kahan par hai it's up to volume 18 now let's have you got we got page 9 at page uh, give us a moment doctor singh five. still looking para 9 at page 5 Now there is a whole new world now. Karunanandhi has given two. Is it by way of the conclusion on this point, Doctor Singhvi? Does it begin like that? I will. I will. Yes, sir. Yes, correct. Justice Collins. Paranayi. Mail me. Correct. Justice Collins got it. Ah, who is me? Dala hai. Paranayi is well as at page five. Join the folder. Yes. 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 Y
Similarly, petitioner's interpretation of the SMA focuses upon the underlying thrust and the principle of recognizing and legitimizing marriages unsupported in social conventions upon which the SMA is founded, rather than asking how the framers intended to decide. That question is wrong, I say with respect. Now, I'm putting that photograph. I've said anti-majoritarian impulses. Unpopular, I'll skip para 9A, but that's an iconic photograph of the 1960s. Come to Malus para 10. Petitioners respectfully submit that the remedy does not involve any judicial surgery, nor the creation of a social new institution, nor a claim for legislation. These are words used by the respondents, Malus. Now, kindly see what it involves. Rather, the issue before this court is one of discrimination of non heterosexual persons from an already legally defined, legally defined institution on the basis of the prohibited markers under Article 15. Malas, one thing more, Malas. Your Lordship is told social institution. Today, it's more a legal institution because your Lordship under the SMA is excluding personal laws. It's a misnomer to again and again bring this scarecrow argument of personal laws. It's a legal institution under SMA, not a social institution. I'm not saying marriage is not a social institution. It's not as it is not it is I mean, I creating, it with it, not is absolute. it is enabling the uh, marriage, but it is also assimilating. I bow down. I don't want to say, use the word absolute. My lord is absolutely right. That part is, I'm not going that far. I'm just saying, Maris, a large amount of that social institution part has been Maris, circumscribed by a legal construct, which is what SMA is. Prior to that, your lordships could not venture there without personal laws. That's the point I'm making. Now, just see the middle of para 10 is very important. I've taken the liberty of highlighting it. A right to marry, along with a scheme for its implementation, already exists. Petitioners are only asking for non-discriminatory access to their existing right and institution. Indeed, petitioners' request is modest. It is to interpret certain provision of SMA in a manner that is both constitution compliant and consistent with the SMA's own underlying thrust. Contrary to the respondent's submission, this does not involve the court in altering the meaning of words or the meaning of marriage. It only brings into the ambit of the SMA a class that was unconstitutionally hitherto excluded. Well, as a, your lordship is just pause here. I'm not on the notice and objection. Your lordship is now being told an equation between right to marry, a declaration to marry, versus a declaration to marry under SMA. Malus, Cicero's words are important, Malus. Cicero said, Malus, that a, a, a book, a room without books is like a body without a soul. Malus, your lordship is being asked by the other side that you recognize an abstract right to marriage without anything under the SMA is really being asking for a body without a soul. That's my submission. Malus. That I've said in para 10 capital A. And Malus, we have a quote, Malus, in the top of my submission, which I Need not be Mary Robinson, President, Ireland, and Ireland. also Malus. the promises of human rights are like empty shells if they are not backed by concrete actions and meaningful change. Malus, may I say, your lordships is what is your lordship being asked? Give a declaration of marriage, but nothing to do with the SMA. These two words, empty shells, Malus, apply, body without a soul apply clearly. Now, Malus, 10b. I have said legislative majorities did not decriminalize. Forget 10C, Malas. Come to 10D. 10D for a minute, Malas. It is respectfully submitted that legislative will is not necessarily a neutral, objective, or meritorious manifestation of desired constitutional objectives and constitutional morality. The Constitution is supreme precisely because in many areas, it digresses from the wishes of mere electoral majorities. The zealous guarding and upholding of several minority rights, including its many nuances, is crucial precisely because electoral majorities are presumed to be wrong, tyrannical, or oppressive at certain times. So, Malus, this is an excessive misplaced reliance on elected majorities and unelected judges on the other side of the equation. Now, Malus, let's go to workability which is the heart of the matter, because I must assuage all these huge apprehensions which I'm going to show are largely red herrings, created Malus, to create some kind of a uh, sphere issue that, oh, what is the Lordship being asked to do? What, how far a Lordship will go? 
Now let's please see. The main part of this workability or lack of workability is personal loss. That your lordship is being dragged into personal loss. Just bear with me. This is a little important. I'll go a little slow. Just come to the third line of 11. In particular, section 19 of the SMA severs ties of persons of Hindu, Buddhist, Sikh or Jain religions married under SMA from their undivided family. At the same time, 21 provides that succession to the property of any person married under SMA is under ISA. Now, the main argument on which, well, on the very tenuous, thin argument it is argued by respondents is the last five lines. Respondents argue that 21A of the SMA carves out an exception for marriages among persons of these four faiths, stating that they remain members of their undivided families, last four words, thus linking them back to religious and personal laws. Now, I am trying to answer this first point. Well, I have given two important tables in para 12. Just see the first table. Prior to 20, because the entire argument is 21A brings back a very minimalist, but a small amount of personal law. Now, prior to 21A is my first table. Everything is ISA. Well, let's kindly go a little slower. It's very important to well, remove these apprehensions. Everything in my first part of the table is ISA. ISA is supposed to be an agnostic, civic, secular law, which goes in tandem with this equally agnostic civic secular law like SMA. There is no Hindu Muslim personal law involved. And the first part, even for Hindus, is well as a severance from the HUF. All the columns are ISA, 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 Muslim, Christian, everything. Now, after 21 Amulets, it remains the same, except for a Hindu couple. Well, I, I, I hope I'm clear on this. Except for a Hindu couple, the second part of my table is identical to the first part. What you are saying. Now, kindly go. Yes, therefore, take it slowly. I am dealing with that. Petitioners submit that 21A does not create a barrier to a constitution compliant reading. 21A only applies for marriages of two Hindus. Further, even when two Hindus marry under SMA, 21A links the SMA regime to personal law. For only two narrow aspects. The whole case should go out of SMA because of this argument was according to respondents. Succession and membership of HUF. Succession and HUF. That's all. So 21A is A limited to succession and HUF. Second limited to two Hindus. Now, Malus, kindly come to my answers. I am, Malus, respectfully submitting three possible interpretive answers. And your Lordship, I am neutral to all. I have a personal choice. It doesn't matter. There are people here, other people. All three According to me, it's a it's a, it's a scare argument to say that so much big is happening, whereas these three, any one of them have a lot of choice, answers it. Firstly, theoretically, this honorable court may elect not to pronounce on the applicability of 21A to non-heterosexual Hindu couples in the present litigation and leave questions of succession open for future litigation expressly. That's only option one. See option two. Secondly, in the alternative, the honorable court may hold that the SMA will apply to non-heterosexual couples exactly as it applies to heterosexual couples. Today, our Lordship has it applying to heterosexual couples by virtue of the introduction of 21A. Specifically, Hindu non-heterosexual couples will be governed by the HSA just like Hindu heterosexual couples. But all non-Hindu Christian, Muslim will be governed by ISA. This is number two. But to achieve this reading, now read what follows. Yes, yes. But, what do we have to do? I have to. Uh, but, but some minute. Is your Lordship's fellows shy of doing this minimalist interpretation? Will be the question. That's the value judgment of your Lordship's. If I'm asking for fellows something which your Lordship has never done before or is unknown to your Lordship, is right. I submit this is a minimalist. Is See the next. Good. Yes, next para. Next para. To, this is minimalist, is my submission. To achieve this reading, the Honorable Court may extend its gender neutral reading of the SMA to the HSA and the ISA. That's all the lordships do. Whatever it has to hold, one, widow and widower in the ISA and male Hindu and female Hindu and widow and widower in the HSA shall be interpreted in a manner that is agnostic of gender and sexual orientation. That too, Malas, there are two options by specifically saying personal law is out. Really have to then 
Recast or redraft the provisions of the Hindu Succession Act. Also. No, your lordship, it doesn't have to recast it. Your lordship has to say, no, no, no. My lord is only in SMA. My lord is not going to HSA. My lord is saying, saying either of two things. Saying that to sorry. achieve this reading, yes, this honourable court may extend its gender-neutral reading of the SMA to the HSA and ISA. It may hold that the words widow, widower in the Indian Succession Act limited to issues of marriage and male Hindu, female Hindu, widow and widower in the Hindu Succession Act, again limited to issues of marriage, shall be interpreted in a manner that is agnostic of gender and Correct, correct, brother, correct, correct. Now, what, what does it mean? Give me a minute. It's very important. Give me a minute. It means that your lordships will first put a caveat in the beginning, we are not getting into personal laws. Second, cumulatively, your lordship would say that today, all heterosexual couples are governed with 21A in only ISA, except for Hindu couples. So the large majority of non-Hindu couples are covered by ISA. Hindu. Third. Yes. Yes. Third. The largest number of people. No, that's the third. So I'm not avoiding it. I'm not avoiding it. I understand. My Lord is right. Third. For the Hindu couples, for the Hindu couples, the agnostic reading will be to words like male, female, widow, widower. In other words, we are creating a new regime, essentially. There. Because that may not be a new regime. Because that is, because even in, no, no, it's not. Let's, if you go down, drill down a little bit the yes. complication. Yes. Now, two spouses of the same sex, yes. one dies. Now, who will that be? Uh, 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 the, what is the kind of estate that she? If your lordship to, adopts, Malus, if your that's the Malus, may I? Well, well, then then you see when it comes to. A, a male, of course, it will be a son. He will be treated. He will be treated as a son. When it is a female, he will be treated as a daughter. Question is, what is that spouse? Will he be treated? Will that spouse be treated as husband? When a, when a male Hindu when dies interstate, for the first priority is to the widow. Yeah. If it's a same-sex male couple yes. and the male has died interstate, there'd be no widow. No, but there will be. The, the, so what you are now therefore saying is that read widow. Reading that to be a compliant. Another word widow. Willy-nilly, we yeah. do, do yeah. enter into yeah. personal law. Yeah. Or, but see, yeah. this, this formulation has one. Surviving spouse. No, that's true. See, that's true. It's a bit of bit oversimplistic. No. Hindus, you say only Hindus. No problem. But at the same time, there is no problem when it comes to. Uh, Indian Succession Act, where the Christians, it anyway applies to them. No, I, I have no problem that with ISA. We come to the, only, the Muslims. Are the one is creating a problem. Muslims are the one who are now bound by the ISA. Yes. No, may, may, may I just. Others. others no, no, may, may I just say. The, the third, there's a third option I've given. The problem is arising because of 21A, which takes you back. It is not arising for any other category. So, Muslims and Christians who go under heterosexual couples under SMA go under ISA. Doctor, now, Malas, the how, third one is. Look at how that third. You are yourself struggling at an intellectual level. You say it is submitted that there is a third option yes. that this honourable court may hold that since religious and personal law related issues by agreement of parties are beyond the scope of. That's what we started the matter with, Malas. We are saying. We are we saying can't, outside. We can't. We can't rule no, on. No, but we started the matter by saying, saying that look by agreement of parties. This no, has been forget kept, agreement. Create Malas. a minefield for a future bench. Malas, forget the mind, uh, agreement. Your lordships is saying that from the inception, the petitioners. Malas, the petitioner. Malas, kindly read the whole. You have to then decide it. No, no, Malas, kindly allow me. No, no, no. Well, I need the whole para. This matter started by the petitioners who invoked your lordship's court to say we don't want to get into personal laws. Your lordship can certainly rely on that petition. But now read the whole para. Just allow me, third para. It is simply the third option. This honorable court may hold that since religious and personal law related issues, forget agreement of parliament, I need to delete that word. I mean, I don't want to, not necessarily, are beyond the scope of this litigation, which your lordship declared at the beginning when the matter started. It follows that personal law statutes as well as provisions of secular laws that relate back to personal laws, that is only 21A, are excluded from consideration. Since 21A itself was introduced as an exception to the regime under 19 to 21, non-consideration of the issue would simply mean a reversion to the default regime of ISA. So are we reading up or are we reading down by doing that? Well, Which of the two would it fall under? Well, I am saying there are two options. Either it will all fall under ISA, or your lordship may apply uh, the 
So then we have house to, and person we, interpretation for HSA Hindus. So then we come back to the old position that yes. when it comes to same sex couples, we will interpret it in a particular manner. Yes. When it comes to heterosexual couples, we will read all those laws, laws in a different manner. Well, we will have to have those in two option different two, interpretive tools. Well, so can I just summarize? What is it? After a preliminary statement that when the matter started, your lordship had made it clear and the petitioners have also said that there is no going into personal law. Your lordship may adopt either of two. Allow me to well summarize. One, that everybody is under ISA and 21A will not apply to the same thing. Alternatively, that well everyone is under ISA because ISA is not posing a problem. But for same-sex Hindu couples, your lordship reads the word spouse or a word person. That's the summary of the whole thing. That much your lordship will have to do. If it is beyond the bounds of judicial bullets writing, it is beyond the bounds. Why should we preclude uh, Hindu, Hindu? This is the logic in my para 15. But, but I am saying this cannot be the complete exclusion which the response then, then there is a classification amongst the same-sex couples. You are saying that those who fall in 21A, you treat them differently, leave it at that. For the others, you have ISA. No, you are actually subclassifying now. No, not in the second option, in the third option, yes. In the second option, the better option is whether your lordship interprets it to mean spouse or person. Then there is so no such Hindu problem. Hindu non-heterosexual couples yeah. would be governed exclusively by the ISA, according to you. How is on option three, not on option two. This is important. Let us forget option three. Then option neither are we reading down. Nor are we reading up, nor are we striking down 21A. No, so, so let me leave aside option 3. Let us say that your lordship keeps 21A. Dr. Singh, we are not writing a blog, we are writing a judgment for society. Well, your lordship is keeping 21A. Let me tell your lordship well, how I would respectfully submit a judgment can be written with 21A existing. It will certainly not be a blog, well, See, be you may have You may have that legislator's pen elsewhere. <laughs> But you, you can't persuade us to use this here. I can only make a submission. Well, it's how, let us just for a minute focus on 21A. Yes. Your lordships may adopt the second option. 21A is given full force if your lordship reads the word spouse and person. That's one sentence answer. Forget the third option. 21A is excluded, as my Lord Justice Bhatt said, only in the third option. In second option, since 21A is there, your lordship applies it. But your lordship would have to do person or spouse that much of reading. That's the long and short of it. Now, is it such an insuperable thing that the whole case Malus, should be a mere declaration of marriage? Then Malus, is there is virtually is an empty shell. Is it a Malus, I would say it is only Malus, a cardiac checkup. <laughs> <laughs> or is it a transplant? That, Malus, that too, <laughs> cardiac checkup, Malus, that too by a physician, not a surgeon. <laughs> physician. Please have a heart. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> That's neatly put. <laughs> well, let's just see the conclusion at para 15. Yes. Just see the conclusion at para 15. Because then I have these special categories coming after that. It would not follow from this approach. Now, I'm giving the answer to a possible objection to my approach. It would not follow from this approach that non heterosexual Hindu couples who marry under SMA would be excluded from legal succession regimes altogether. Today, We'll, we'll resume tomorrow. I think it should be around 12 wish. 12 wish. But we'll resume the moment we are ready. Yes, I'll take very little time. Uh, very little time. And, uh, and now, for all of you on this side, one hour flat. So please, please in the can invitation I make one out time. Suggestion, but I only want to make a suggestion. Yes. I don't want to argue, Milord. Yes, yes, Mr. Rodhi. You know, my suggestion is this <clears throat> if you agree, Milord, to some part of SMA, then, Milord, it is there. 
then sorry if you, if you agree, don't agree to SSE, i am making that suggestion as an alternative suggestion is this that will not lordship grant us a declaration that we have a right to marry now lord we require in reality some state recognition a document that yes you have got married i go to a bank i go to an insurance company i want an insurance for a family i need to have a document i can't go with the judgment of the supreme court and say i have a right to marry and i am married the bank manager or the insurance say show us some proof therefore i am submitting that lord a document of marriage by the of an affidavit between two parties that i take you as a spouse in marriage can be my lord a via media for registration under section 18 of the registration act which is registration of an optional document so not sma so i steer clear of sma i have my lord two affidavits i take you as my spouse you take me as my spouse the affidavit my lord form i have taken from the act with that affidavit I can go and have a registration. So if I go to a bank, I can show me, Lord, I have some registration. How else will it have? Section 8. Hold on. I need some document. We'll come back. So just keep, Lord, Section 18 in view. 18F is an optional document. This is obviously wholly without prejudice. Yes, we are asking something totally. I'm saying steering clear. Wholly, wholly without prejudice. Why I am saying so? I am at the last. I'm the bottom rung. We can't get everything. We have to take what we can. Yes. Lord, may I just take two? Tomorrow. 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 Lord, can I just take two? Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Tomorrow, Mr. Tired souls are not receptive souls. And the heart would still be in the right place. Online, you want? Sure, certainly. No difficulty about either. Yes, come online. No difficulty. Then you can perform online.